Hey stream, producer NVC here, just giving you a quick update while we kick things off. We're just having some lobby troubles and we will be starting very shortly. It would be Vedius and Wesker Biscuit bringing you our first game of the night. It is TCA Esports up against LF Org. So that is Deadly and Co up against Tundra and Co. Any moment now, don't go too far. Gotta know that this ain't living But we could run From Elysium And let it burn, let it burn You've gotta know nothing left
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to UK Masters Week 1, Day 2. Yesterday, yesterday defying, uh, defying expectations, we saw Sensei manage to bring Eminem to a one-all draw while Districts dominated, taking both games against Perilous Void. My name is Peter Wesker Biscuit Hartnell, and joining me this evening is Andy Vedius Day. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I am a little bit rusty. I haven't cast in a while, but I'm looking forward to dust off the rust. And we should have some exciting games with the two teams that we have playing this evening. Yep. First up, we've got Terracotta Army TCA go up against Looking for Org. What well, uh, TCA are bringing to the field: Yoppa in their top lane, Jet in the jungle, Krogson in their mid lane, Deadly, and Raisins in their bot and support positions, respectively. Meanwhile, on the other side of the rift, we'll be looking for Org. They have Tundra, their substitute up in the top lane. Broxa in the jungle. Vixie is going to be playing in the mid with SK. Vardags on AD carry and Nutri on support. And just looking at the lineups of these two teams, having had the opportunity to personally play against a lot of these players uh, only a year ago, I am really excited to see what these two teams can bring out in this best of two this evening. Yeah, we've got some very, very high-ranked players. It's wonderful to see Tundra back in competition again, since it's been a while for him, I believe. It certainly has, and I think this this could be a meta where he can thrive in. We're seeing a lot of carry top laners at the moment, and I think the champions like Kennen and Jace can really suit his playstyle, depending on if he still plays the way that he always used to back when I was a competitive player. But I'm excited to see what these two teams bring out. We are playing on the live client, which is patch 6.20, uh, which means that a couple of interesting things have happened. We've seen uh, Yorick is enabled, Nunu has had a couple of changes as well and as well as that in uh, Ivern is still unavailable for these teams but I don't think that's too bad because from what I've heard from a lot of the players is that Ivern still not considered that great as of yet maybe that'll change though as teams have uh, had a better opportunity to get to know him and better understand where he fits into the meta oh for sure he's not the easiest of champions to pick up a lot of interesting interactions and plays you can make with him but I think it's going to be a little while before we see him on the competitive scene Yes, yeah, certainly seems the case. So uh, we should be jumping in to Champions League right now. This is going to be our first game of the evening. And in terms of band priority, I'm curious as to whether or not these guys are going to go for more target bands or if they're going to go for something a little bit more general. We know that champions like Rise, Syndra, Cassiopeia, Nidalee have been quite high priority in terms of bands right now at Worlds. So I wonder whether or not the teams are going to go for something more target focused or if they're just going to stick to the generic strong champions that they want to take off the board. Well, Aurelian Soul already been taken off the board for TCA as well as Tam Kentrell looking for Org. Do you take away that, Jace? And the Rumble as well. Only one more ban left for both teams. Any still, guesses what it might be? Well, Nidalee is still available right now. If we are going to see it, likely going to be a ban coming out from the red side. Uh, if you're the blue team right now, you could look to ban away the Syndra so that you could go for that early priority Nidalee. Uh, or you could ban the Nidalee yourself and say, hey, we want to pick up a mid laner for ourselves. But they're actually right now just trying to limit down the jungle pool. Because if you look at the strong junglers available, Nidalee, Lee Sin, you do still have Rek'Sai, but she has received quite a lot of nerfs in the last few patches. Um, so we'll have to see what these teams look to priorities. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a Nidalee and then possibly the Syndra first pick coming out from the side of TCA. Yeah, well, we've only got a few more seconds left to find out what Looking for Org wants to take off the table before TCA get to take their first pick. It's going to be... It's going to be left to the last second. It is going to be that Nidalee taken away. Now, Syndra would make a good first pick. She's a very solid mid laner with Aurelian's Soul taken off the board as well. Uh, she actually has very few champions that could go against her other than perhaps the Vladimir, which does have somewhat mixed success depending on who you talk to. Uh, but it does actually look like that the jungle is going to be the priority for TCA. Yep, well, we've seen junglers being banned out already from both teams. Interesting that TCA looked to take Elise as their first pick jungler. Certainly some very strong catch potential. Uh, you're already building uh, a strong early game presence with the form of Elise, but I don't think that it's going to be too difficult for the side of looking for Org because Broxer, I do know him as a player that likes to play champions like the Lee Sin. He doesn't have to prioritize it now because when you're going to look to first pick the Elise, you're just going to leave so many other power picks open. And that's exactly what looking for Org have done and picked themselves up. Yep, we've got the Braum and the Syndra, just as you said, getting picked up early on for looking for Org. Certainly a very, very potent mid laner, as well as a very strong support as well. I'd be interested to see what TCA pick up next, though. 
Vladimir, I feel like, would be the safe pick for um, TCA. However, you don't need to pick it up right now. You could look to pick up something like your bottom lane. Maybe you want to save your top laner till later on in the draft. But when you look at the top laners that have been taken off the board, the Jace, the Rumble, uh, champions like Cannon and Trundle somewhat rise in priority. But if you go for an early Cannon, that's just going to be an instant Aurelia lock-in for Tundra. And uh, this guy has played Aurelia for an insanely long time. He can understand the matchup incredibly well. And so perhaps they're just expecting TCA to pick something that early. Uh, however, I completely forgot about the extremely safe top laner that has just been running rampant in Worlds right now, that if you're struggling to think of it, you can just go straight for this pick. Yeah, Poppy is a very nice pickup for TCA, along with their Ezreal. We'll have to see how the Looking for Org uh, lineup develops in response to that. Certainly, Poppy has a lot of potential for shutting down a lot of mobile champions as well. Now, the Trundle would be pretty good here for the uh, for Looking for Org. Does relatively well into the Poppy and will eventually outscale thanks to his ultimate. Um, but you want to also pick up your AD carry. It looks like they're trying to save their top laner for as long as possible. And when you're looking for AD carries to pick into Ezreal, when you pair it up with a Braum, you could go for something all in, like something like the uh, the Jin, or you could go for something a little bit more teamfight orientated, like the Sivir, who has very powerful pushing power, and is actually very safe when you pair it up with the Braum as well. So uh, you have quite a few options in terms of what you want to go for in the bottom lane, but I do think that on the other side, you can go for something a little bit more aggressive, something like the Ezreal and Nami, to really punish this Braum if he wants to go for something like a Jin. Well, we are going to see those ones locked in. It's going to be the Olaf. It's going to be the Cannon, presumably being taken up to the top lane. Certainly, some interesting team fight potential developing for looking for Org. Yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, pick potential when you compare the Braum and the Syndra together. You also have uh, a very powerful jungler in the form of Olaf. Actually, another big ban that has been coming out throughout Worlds fairly consistently, um, but. He also does relatively well into champions like Elise, especially once he hits that level 6 mark. He becomes an incredibly strong duelist, and his wave clear, or jungle clear even, is actually surprisingly fast, which a lot of people don't entirely respect. Uh, if We'll have to keep an early track on his jungle pathing, because if he actually gives away his blue, that could hurt his early clear speed very harshly. The cannon into the poppy should be relatively in favor of the cannon. He has a lot of harass, he has a lot of all-in potential. Uh, however, Poppy just being that tanky frontline that can typically sustain most matchups shouldn't struggle too much during the laning phase. Yes, uh, we see the final picks taken for TCA. We're going to see Yorick and we're going to see Karma picked up. That's an interesting choice. Uh, I wonder whether or not that Yorick was actually a lock-in or whether or not that's actually just a flex pick remember that here in the uk league of legends scene not everyone has availability to all of the champions and it's likely that they wanted to lock in a mid laner wouldn't be surprised to see something like the vladimir come out up against the syndra syndra is quite well with the team as well uh the problem that they have uh is that we don't actually know whether or not that is a tom kench uh the uh yorick pick as of yet so just uh, it does appear that one of the players did experience a bit of a disconnect. So I think that we're likely going to be jumping out of lobby relatively quickly because you don't want to show your final pick if you're looking for org. Obviously, it gives away strap, mm. but I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, the mid laner ends up being changed. I'd be very surprised if they decide to actually put the Yorick up in the mid lane. It would be, be very entertaining to see, but I think you're right. It seems a little unlikely. Uh, we do see... Oriana is the pick, apparently, based on what the magical fairies in my ear are telling me. Um, so, a bit of a strange pick in the mid lane. Um, something like an Oriana, typically, I mean, she's she's always been considered as a fairly safe mid laner, but going into a Syndra, it's it can be very difficult because of how low in mobility she is. It makes it very easy for Syndra to set up for picks. And if you ever burn your flash in the mid lane, it is so easy for that Olaf to just flank around in the mid lane, throw a couple of axes. You have no way to escape because you have no dashes. You have no uh, innate survivability moves, which means that this Syndra, if she just gets an even slight early lead, then she can snowball this lane out of control. And funnily enough, that is what Syndra is very well known for, snowballing her lane out of control. So I think it's a bit of a risk. I'm surprised that they wouldn't go for something safe like the Vladimir. Um, but I guess that they're a little bit more comfortable on this Oriana pick. We'll have to see how things work out. Mm. Uh, it's also worth noting, of course, that Olaf's going to be still trouble uh, 
for that Oriana, even once they have a level six, I believe his Ragnarok making him immune to at least to the pulling back power of the shockwave. Oh yeah, I mean these team fights are going to be pretty crazy when you look at the the comp that TCA have actually built for themselves because they they have a bit of a mix and match. They have Ezreal, uh, they have Poppy, Elise, Oriana, and Karma. So it feels like they've built fairly for lane because when you have Ezreal, Karma. Um, that definitely signals that you're going to try and put a lot of poke and harass down and build your advantage up during the early laning phase. Um, but then when you also pair that up with an Elise, you have a lot of early ganking pressure. But then you combine that with a Poppy and an Orianna who not really built around um, this sort of kite, poke, single, catch a target out style of comp. They're very much geared towards these team fights, these peel sort of uh, compositions, which they may very well be able to do. I mean, I could see a way in which you can use the Orianna to buy yourself time to allow the Ezreal to reposition and get that damage down. But based on what we've seen so far from looking for Org, where they have the Syndra, the Cannon, uh, combined with an Olaf, it's just going to be so easy to run through this comp of uh, TCA. And I think that they're really going to struggle to just deal with the amount of backline threat that they have when you look at the cannon Olaf combo. Yeah, it's a very potent combination. I mean, I was just going to say, uh, I don't know if they're looking for Org last pick, which was Udyr, uh, just before we disconnected. Was oh, yeah, no, that was definitely a random. That was that was a random. <laughs> so given, given what that is, what would you expect to see them pick up as the final pick to try and round out the composition? So we talked about it earlier on. You could go for something like the Caitlyn if you want to try and match the the sort of pressure because she has relatively good wave clear. She's not going to struggle so much against the amount of poke. Or you could go for something safe like the Sevib Braum, which just has really powerful late game team fighting price. And because also of the amount of wave clear, it's just a very safe lane that you're not necessarily going to win, but you should be able to get through without any serious casualties happening during the early laning phase. And based on what we can see, it looks like that they are going to go for something safe in the bottom lane. And uh, looking for Org, I do feel like their composition is a little bit more well-rounded because they have great uh, laning phase. They have an advantage in the top half. They have an advantage in the mid lane. Yes, they're going to fall behind in the bottom lane, but that's okay because it's Civit Braum, and as long as the deficit isn't too big, they'll scale nicely into the mid and late game. You have good pick potential, you have a lot of crowd control, you have a reliable way to engage, and it's very easy for them to dive onto the back line of TCA. So I'm heavily in favor of the composition right now for looking for Org, but I don't want to count TCA out, and I don't want to count out UK League of Legends because... This scene is full of surprises, and when people get onto their comfort picks, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. Mm. I can very much see some terrifying situations developing as looking for Org charge down with that on the hunt, with the Olaf out front providing it an impenetrable wall which smashes it into the TCA lineup. But still, uh, I have to think that it's going to be a lot of how the early game plays out as well as to how effective that's going to be. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, just to update, we are right now in the three minute delay, something that I haven't actually experienced in a long time. Um, but <laughs> now we have to see how much knowledge I can retain uh, based <laughs> on the champions and compositions that we have. So before we actually get into that, I do want to talk a little bit about the teams and the players, because for those that uh, may have just visited the UK scene. These are actually two of some of the top teams competing right now in the UK. There are a bunch of other competitions going on with the ESL UK Premiership. We recently had I58, I believe, go on, uh, which was a very competitive scene. We had a lot of action going on. Um, but when you look at these two lineups, there's actually a lot of very well-known players like Raisins. He's been playing for TCA since I was a player. Uh, same for Deadly. These guys have been playing for TCA for an incredibly long time. Jet has been around the UK scene for a long time and actually has built up a decent reputation within the scene as a very solid jungler for the side of TCA. He's very good at setting up for these early lane ganks and trying to get his team ahead during the laning phase. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them play more around the bottom half of the map because from what I recall, Deadly and Raisin seem to be one of the big carries of their team. They're typically the playmakers. So if you're going to try and set up anywhere, it is usually on the bottom half. So when you have a poppy up in the top, that's quite good for Yopper because it's very safe. He can just get through the laning phase without too much of a struggle. And as long as Broxer doesn't put too much gank focus in the top half of the map, then Yopper should be able to get through the laning phase. But meanwhile, on the other side, these are a lot of well-known names. I mean, Vardags, formerly of SK. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar. Recently, he was... Uh, 
kicked out of the Challenger Series, unfortunately. However, he still demonstrates that he knows what he's doing in that AD carry position. Broxer has been building up a very good re reputation here in the UK as being one of the top junglers in the scene. And then Nutri and Tundra have been teammates for as long as I can remember. Uh, typically, their top laner is Rifty. However, bringing in Tundra, uh, it's nice to see him being back in the competitive scene. I'm wondering what he's going to be able to bring to the team when they are used to playing with Rifty, who is very independent and is actually very carry orientated. But with Tundra coming in, I don't think that they're going to shift too much in terms of playstyle because Tundra used to be known for playing champions like the Aurelia, uh, where he could just go... Uh, and the Nara as well, where he could just go crazy and get a bunch of outplays in the one versus one, and pretty much just defeat his opponent based on his own skill. Well, we'll have to see how that one develops. We're going to be into the game fairly shortly. Only a few more seconds left in this delay. Whew. If you're going to make some wild predictions for this first game, and of course we are going to be playing two games between these teams this evening to try and get maximum points, who are you feeling best about going into this first one? Well, right now I feel like that uh, it is looking for Org that have the better composition overall. They just seem to have um, a better overall game plan. Not only have they got stronger laners in both top and mid, but they've also got a very safe bottom lane that will scale well into the mid game. And then with the amount of crowd control and the amount of engage potential that they have, it should be very easy for them to dive onto the back line. Ezreal, very well known for being a squishy AD carry that, yes, he's fairly mobile. And when you pair that up with a Karma, it's actually pretty safe. But when you have a Kennen and Olaf diving on your face, uh, having been empowered by On the Hunt from Sivir, it can mm. be a little bit difficult to be able to kite away from that, especially when all your crowd control is not even going to remotely affect that Olaf that's just looking to charge onto your face. Well, I mean, that, that does speak to, presumably, uh, what we're seeing for looking for Org, uh, as far as their game plan, as far as his team fights go. But TCA, what are, how are they trying to play? Are they trying to avoid these team fights entirely? So uh, I would imagine that a lot of their advantages uh, are going to be accrued during the laning phase. A lot of uh, emphasis has to be put onto Jet trying to snowball some kind of early advantage because the bigger the early edge that TCA do have over their opponents is this bottom line in the Ezreal Karma. It is it can be uh, insanely aggressive. It has a lot of poking power, and you can push the Civet and the Braum underneath their tower early. And you have to remember how good this Elise is as at actually setting up for dives. So if they can get some good pressure bot, maybe even have a roam coming down to the bottom half of the map from Krogson, you can look for an early dive, get an early lead in your bottom lane, and then build an advantage from there. I'll be interested to see how TCA deal with the spell shield of Valdags. Uh, certainly able to block out a, potentially a lot of the poke, uh, given enough time. But perhaps we might see that spell shield get overwhelmed by too many spells being thrown at Valdags in too short a time. Certainly could be. Uh, the bot lane will be an interesting one that we need to keep track of. But we also need to keep a close eye on the junglers and their pathing because uh, Broxer wouldn't be surprised to see him spend a lot of time in the top half of the map. However, for an Olaf, his blue buff is fairly important because if you want that good clear speed, you're going to have to be swinging out those undertows, which cost a lot of mana during the early game. So making sure you get that blue buff is integral to guaranteeing a successful early uh, jungle clear. Um, but the great thing about Elise is when you pair that up with someone like an Ezreal and Karma who can get an early shove and look to invade, you could even look to try and contest the opponent blue buff. Um, so where the junglers start is going to be very important uh, and how they decide to position in the early game could dictate a lot of how the first 10 minutes of the game go. Well, it looks like we're going to see the junglers both starting on the upper side of the map. The I have to, we'll have to see whether or not their top lane is going to go help them out. It certainly seems like Tundra is in the area, but not quite the same for Yopper. Well, at least fairly independent, uh, has also pretty good jungle clear speed, so nothing too much to worry about. But as you rightly said, both junglers standing in the top half of the map. Looked like Yopper actually went for a bit of an intercept as well. Fortunately for him, not going to result in too much. We are just going to see some standing laning phases, so nothing too intricate. But the early push is actually coming out from the bottom lane of TCA, which is something that we talked about earlier on, somewhat of what we expected. And you can just see the pressure that Vardags and Nutri are already being put under. So far, so good. We haven't seen any particularly uh, crazy plays come out yet. Tundra and Yoppa trading away in that top lane. But so far, nothing too conclusive. So, just keeping an eye on the map right now. Level 2 has been picked up by the bottom lane of TCA. 
Uh, I do want to remind, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a best of two. Um, all of it is contributing two points, and this is the first week of the UK Masters. So even if you drop a game here, not the end of the world, you still have plenty of weeks left to play for. Um, but obviously, the sooner you can get these wins, especially against teams like this, who are considered definitely top tier here in the UK scene, um, is, is just going to be better for you in the standings moving forward. And for any of our viewers who aren't familiar with the best of two, uh, and this is the part which I hope I really hope I get this right myself, uh, is that for a team to score four points, they'll have to win both games this evening. Otherwise, if they both take a game home, they'll only get one each. And of course, if they lose entirely, they'll get nothing at all. So, you don't want to lose, is the TLDR, uh, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. But have a look at the elites now. You can see moving into the river. Olaf was able to get himself that blue buff, so he should be fine. But the Scuttle Crab priority is actually going to go in favor of Jet, which is going to be great for his bottom lane, considering how aggressively that they are playing. Making sure that you have good vision control in the river uh, prevents any early ganks coming out from the Olaf. And you can see he just wanders into the river a little bit too late. He decided to go for the wolves rather than picking up that crab. Uh, and is now going to have to back off because there's no nothing really for him to try and get in this early game. Yeah, that seems like a really smart move, punishing the relative immobility or the lack of, I guess, different options that Olaf has as far as his ganking uh, paths go with that Rift Scuttler. Seems very clever early on. The thing is for the Olaf, when you look at the lanes that he can actually gank, uh, bottom lane really isn't a good lane for him to try and gank, simply because there's very little innate crowd control. Yes, if you land a Braum Q, then uh, you then have to land four consecutive auto attacks. And against the Karma and Ezreal, that's easier said than done. So if this is why when we were talking earlier on, the mid lane and the top lane would actually be better matchups for him to try and prioritize because they have some innate crowd control in their kit. You have the E coming out from Vixie, and you also have just a wealth of ability um, options to stun your opponent with the cannon. So uh, trying to set up some Udi ganks in the top half of the map will be in his favor. But right now, all the lanes are actually going very relatively well for the side of TCA because um, you can see Yoppa actually putting a lot of pressure in the top side. He got an early push, and even though he's taking a lot of harass, he's still playing very aggressively. But look at down in the mid. Yep, oh, Crox and having to flash away. Boxer isn't maybe quite done with one. They, they continue to push the damage through. They take the first blood. And this is the risk that you run when running an Orianna into a Syndra. Uh, we were, gonna, we were just talking about how well the lanes were going for TCA, but in the mid lane, he was playing far too aggressively. He was getting a lot of harass down onto Vixie, but he did not respect the potential gank from the Olaf from the flank. We talked about it during Champion Select, and when you have no flashes in Orianna, it is so easy for the Tundra Olaf to collapse. And now Tundra... Wow, that was a really nice play. Very good command of the amount of damage the Tundra was able to pluck out. And maybe not quite enough respect from Yuppa, who perhaps felt maybe just a little bit too comfortable. Yeah, I feel like that's the name of the game right now for TCA because Tundra gets himself a solo kill in the top. Vixie doesn't get a kill, but is able to get that first blood assist, which is going to do massive for his lane. And things are just going so well, largely as a result of TCA not respecting their opponents. Yoppa took way too much harass and he stuck around longer than he should have. He could have just backed away. He should have been happy with how the laning phase was going. Same for the mid. He pushed up too aggressively and then he gets punished. But now Broxa he needs to be careful. Yep, he could be in trouble here. He's taking a fair chunk of damage. He is going to walk away from this one. But it can only be so many times he can get caught out of that. Yep, and now we can see the top lane. TP coming in from Tundra, so we're not going to see any early TP plays. Yet to see very much coming out from Jet. We talked about the possibility of an early dive from the bottom lane as Yoppa. That's a big minion wave. You need to be careful there, mate. Yes, not ideal. Uh, it mean a lot of damage put across the Tundra, but those minions doing work up the top lane. Maybe there could have been a better moment for that. Perhaps, but he's still able to get a fair chunk of damage down. Um, the real lane now that has to be careful is this Orianna in the mid, because she has no flash, she has no cleanse. Uh, and that Syndra has already picked up the lost chapter. So she's going to be pretty happy with her current position. You can see at least posturing on the top half. Tundra, he's got no flash. He could be in trouble. He gets stunned up. He has got the ultimate going, but it's... Oh my god, Jet is the one to take the kill. It looked very close for a second, but of course, no flash makes it relatively straightforward. That's actually very surprising because I thought Tundra was initially backing off after he had seen Jet, but it turns out that 
That was a... Oh, Krogson! Now Krogson. <laughs> yeah, Krogson in trouble. Thank you so much. Damage the Shockwave. Not in time to stop the kill from coming out. We're seeing uh, Elithorg pulling into the lead. Wow, so Vixie picks up a kill in the mid lane. We talked about this during Champion Select, the snowball of Syndra. You get that first bit of gold, the early gank coming out from Broxa. The lack of flash available on the Orianna means that she is just a sitting duck for the Syndra who can freely get all this harass down on this low mobility mid lane mage. And this is why there was just a little bit of doubt coming out from us during the Champion Select because it is a very risky pick and if you fall behind early, things go horribly wrong. Hmm, it's interesting to see the Lost Chapter being picked up as well for Krogshan, rather than... Uh, given the fact he's given away two kills early on, I'm, I would maybe expect a more uh, robust purchase, perhaps. More defensive. He could have gone for an early Abyssal Scepter, and I feel like the deficit that he's in right now, um, he could have gone for that. But honestly, he should have just respected Vixie a little bit more as we do see Jet moving to the top half of the map once again. The flash across the wall! Tundra in trouble, getting pounded down! And Jet takes him out again! So even though the mid lane is going horribly for TCA, Jet is trying to compensate by getting a lot of ganked up in the top. Bottom lane is going heavily in favor of Deadly right now, but Varnax and Uchi are doing a good job of maintaining even CS, but it doesn't matter because at least for the time being, TC is still holding control over two lanes of the map as Broxa. They are engaging underneath the tower. This seems really dangerous. Jet is going to go up high and he gets another kill, the third of the game. Unbelievable early game coming out from TCA right now. We talked about how Jet needed to be that early game carry, and right now it looks like looking for Orga just handing that to him on a silver platter as Vixie has now joined the party. They're trying to keep the turret from going down. Oh, they're gonna manage it! Yoppa goes down, they don't get the turret! Down in the bottom lane, there's fighting breaking out as well. Exhaust has been burned through. Varnax has the flash, he's going to be caught up! Nutri brings up the shield, and they're just gonna get away! So action continuing to happen all across the map. Yoppa, he decided to prioritize getting that turret. He felt like, no, there was no way I'm going to be able to get out of this situation. So let's try and get a bit of global gold in my pocket. It does not work out for him. But meanwhile, in the bottom lane, it looked like that looking for Org got a little bit too antsy. They wanted to try and force that fight. But Deadly was in a much better position than Vardags was. He had to flash. He had to use his heal. Only Nutri gets away with his flash. And it also enables TCA to pick up that first tower of the game. The first blood tower is going to be so massive for the side of TCA, enabling them to build up this early lead and snowball it in their favor. Well, I mean, it speaks to the pressure they're applying. that They just got denied taking that first tower up top and immediately transitioned down to the bottom. I like what we just saw from Bardags and Nutri, backing off, being aware that Krogshan was going to come in and make their lives absolutely miserable. Uh, but already, uh, some nice map play from TCA. Looks right now that after seeing the backs from TCA's bottom lane, looking for Org on a try and get themselves a return objective. So they will be able to pick up that first Ocean Drake. Good awareness uh, as we do see an ult in the top lane. Yep, Yoppa is getting aggressive onto. He's too tanky there for Tundra to chew through. But here comes Razor coming up from the side. The flash has been burned. He's been held in place. But they're not going to finish the job. So another tower going in favor of TCA. It was very low. It was going to be difficult for him to defend that. But not only that, they get the flash out from Tundra as well because Raisins, he roamed to the top half of the map. He wanted to try and get this kill onto Tundra. Unfortunately, they didn't quite have the crowd control to lock him down in place. Uh, which is another advantage gained for the side of TCA, but they may very well lose that as now Deadly is in a one versus two in the bottom. So you can see Raisins very quickly trying to return to the bottom half of the map to help his AD carrier. Well, you say quickly, and of course, uh, it's easy to miss that the boots mobility being picked up for Raisins. So I have to imagine we're going to see more, uh, more wide area plays coming out from him as the game goes on. That's a very good point, actually. Going for the early boots of mobility does enable that Karma to roam around the map, try and help the laners out, paired up with Jet. As we do actually see the Rift Herald being started. Yoppa, he's looking for something. <laughs> this is going to be... Oh, nice catch on to Vixie! The... Doesn't manage to quite get the Keeper's Verdict, um, but Boxer is lurking around the outside. He takes oh, a man. huge chunk of damage, though. Raisin's taking down very low as well. Nutri is there with the shield. We're going to see them knock up onto Jet. Can they finish the job? A couple more hits are going to do it. No, Jet walks away from this one. So a lot of back and forth action happening around the mid lane once again. That could have been a kill down onto Vixie, but unfortunately the shockwave actually knocked him out of range of the cocoon. 
Very unfortunate combination. It does still get the flash out of Vixie, and the only summoner spell that was really used was Yoppa on Yoppa's flash, sorry, on the side of TCA. So nobody ends up going down, just a lot of summoner spells traded, but TCA is still in control of the map. They have two members in mid. Vixie needs to be careful because he doesn't have flash, but the ultimate is unavailable for Krogson as well. So they're just trying to put a bit of pressure down onto this mid tier one. It is attracting a lot of numbers from both teams. Three members turning it shortly into four all around this mid site. I don't know if either of these teams are going to be able to make anything from it, though. For the time being, it doesn't look like that. TCA, though, they want to try and... Uh, what we now need to pay attention is to the lane assignments of these teams because a lot of uh, amateur teams often don't really know what to do with a lead once they've got it. And two towers are now in favor of TCA. And they have to decide where they're going to move from next. And they've actually decided to move their duo in the mid, which is a good decision because it's much easier for them to push. And if looking for Org respond by having this duo lane go up against them once more, well, they've already lost. We've already seen that in the bottom lane. So this is going to be absolutely fine for the side of TCA. They just have to be careful of Vixie, who has a lot of damage. <laughs> Deadly! Oh my god, it gets away on such minimal health! I mean, Vixie, the damage is absolutely bonkers. They're able to start moving in on this mid lane turret. The minions are trying to be cleared, but it's not really maybe happening in enough time. There's not that much damage going down on that turret, though, saying that. But look at the bottom lane as well. Krogson forcing the minions underneath the turret. That's going to be a big minion wave that looking for Org do not have available. But moving back to the mid lane, we just have to talk about Deadly. The one factor that did not happen in the bottom lane was the presence of Vixie. And this Syndra, so well known for being able to hold mid lane, even in a one versus two scenario, largely thanks to her fantastic kill presence that she has, especially with the completed Morel and Omicron. And speaking of kill presence... Well, it's worth bearing in mind that Yoppa has got that Rift Herald buff, so it's going to be a little bit tougher uh, to take down than it would be otherwise. Tundra, it seems to be up for the challenge, <laughs> continuing to pour in shurikens into Yoppa's face. But it's really, really tough, and they, even the proc of the Thunderlord is not doing too much damage. Both teams looking to put some attention around this top lane, and we'll see if it develops any further. Yoppa pounds Tundra into the wall! We're going to see the stun come out, and it's going to be very close. Ragnarok being deployed, the Olaf is unstoppable! <laughs> The damage though <laughs> coming out, and we're going to see multiple taking down. Vixie is there to pick up the tail end kill, but it's not great for looking for Org. Action just continues to happen, and what looked like a fantastic situation for looking for Org ends up in dismay once more. Two members end up going down. Tundra is now losing this one against Yoppa, who's just decided to stack magic resistance. He's sitting at 134 at 15 minutes into the game, and Tundra doesn't even have a completed item yet. Things are just going so well for this TCA lineup, and we just have to backtrack to exactly what happened in the jungle, because for looking for Org, they thought that they had caught Raisins out of position. He is this squishy karma that should be able to just drop at the first sign of this big, beefy uh, Olaf. But he is not expecting the support from Krogson to come in from the flank. The damage from the ultimate as well. The Morella Nomicon just wasn't or enabled the, uh, enough from Krogson to actually get the kill. They end up getting two, and now the kill score is actually even, and TCA want to try and contest this blue. Well, there's, there's a blue on the table. There's also the second Ocean Drake of the game. Oh, that was maybe a little close for comfort. Nice use of the pickup from Cydia to keep her blue buff safe. But only 24 seconds separate these teams from another potential dragon. But look at the positioning right now for TCA. They have mid lane priority because all of the members are looking for Org. The oh, shock oh, wave! It's absolutely massive. They've demolished the health bars of looking for Org. They take down the turret and they maybe, just maybe, could take something else. I am sorry, Krogson, for doubting your Oriana because you waves right now with your team members you should be able to push down onto this tier 2 mid but let's see if looking for all can stop them jet is getting taken down very low but it does not look, look like looking for Orga. A tall in position. We're seeing the teleport coming in, though. Tundra getting smacked into the wall. So much damage coming through. He has to try and flash away. Croxon getting caught on the tail end. Tundra does go down. Croxon could be next. Jet takes them out. Yoppa is taken down very low. It's frontlining. But it doesn't look like looking for Orga. can get the tasty underbelly. Another kill coming in for TCA. They are running over looking for Org. I don't know if they can take anything more, but the minions are coming in. TCA get a 4 
for zero. That could have been a phenomenal flank from looking for Org, but once again, TCA with the fantastic response. Yoppa being the hero that his team needs, knocking the cannon into the wall, enabling the Oriana safety to just do damage from the wolf camp. They had no vision of him. They had no idea that he was just sitting there being free to do whatever he pleased. Deadly wasn't touched in the fight. The backline wasn't even remotely afraid of the damage that Trundra was trying to put out. And that enabled just the cleanup coming out from TCA. But I cannot praise Yoppa enough. He got so many fantastic charges down, not only onto Tundra, but also onto Vixie into the broken turret. That's going to be an inhibitor 18 minutes into the game. <laughs> Pretty unusual to see. That much being able to force through really decisive play from TCA. We have got the second Ocean Drake coming up. I think it's going to very quickly go down in favor of looking for Org. So they have stacked those both up. Whether it's going to be the difference maker is another question entirely. Absolutely crazy game. I was not expecting this to come out from TCA. Uh, I will hold my hand up and say that I was heavily in favor of the comp coming out from looking for Org. But... In all honesty, TCA, they just played the early game so fantastically well. They built up such a massive advantage in the bottom lane, got that first turret. They also spent so much jungle pressure up into the top lane that Tundra just couldn't deal with Yoppa. He eventually outscaled, and now he's at a point that they can just dive this turret for free. Yeah, Tundra again is getting crushed into the wall. They're desperately trying to keep him alive. But they've got the position. Oh, they finally <laughs> they got him! And then another tower, the sixth tower of the game. No towers whatsoever for looking for Org. And TCA are going to make their move onto the top lane, draw coming down the Zorot portal, and they're continuing to apply that pressure. Look, the dive is coming out. Broxa, he's chunked. Oh my god, he got punted out the shockwave, I believe. I don't even know. They're pushing through onto the first inhibitor tower of the game. Uh, no, sorry, I, what am I talking about? The second one, of course. And they're going to be able to take away yet another inhibitor. Yoppa going in on the back line. May have stepped over steps. Nutri is taking down very, very low. But it's so hard for looking for Org to find the right place. That inhibitor getting poked down. And there's such little breathing room for them right now. It looks like the pressure is going to return, though, from looking for Org. Tundra can't find the ultimate. Yoppa is their front line. He's so tanky, though. You talked about all the magic that's been built up. It's paying off right now. They cannot punch through to the back line of TCA, who are dancing around them. Their health bars are getting fairly low, but I don't know what Looking for All can do right now. Well, they have actually gotten a lot of damage down onto TCA, but look at Deadly. Oof, Bardak's taking us so low. Nutri desperately trying to claw away. TCA, take that second inhibitor, looking absolutely dominant. Deadly playing like a man right there, diving in with the E, unafraid of what Looking for Org throw at him he's able to force Vardags back and then in the five versus four they just commit to the inhibitor they pick it up for themselves and now they have full control over looking for orgs base this is an impressive performance as these stark guardian minions just slowly work their way in and in all honesty looking for org they're just desperately trying to get anything back right now with two inhibitors down their only hope is to try and get a Baron still, but in all honesty, TCA don't have to go anywhere near that Baron. They could just move around to the bottom half of the map. They can easily dive with the composition that they've got. We've seen it time and time again. Crocson just moves up, puts his ball there, and all of a sudden, that is a death ball that the side of looking for Org have to just constantly avoid. And this is so smart from TCA. They recognize that the Baron is the one way that they can throw this game away, and so they are staying way clear of it because they know they have a big enough lead that they can end the game without it. It's a little hard to believe what a ruins looking for Org's base is only 21 minutes into the game. I mean, TCA have been so, so decisive, putting so much pressure on. It looks like they're not going to stop anytime soon, making a move in one of the last turrets available for looking for Org. Oh, look at the flank coming out from Jay. He's trying to force looking for Org away. I don't think it's going to work. Nutri pounded into the wall. Krogson gets the kill. They've got the turret whenever they want to take it. And the on the hunt being used defensively to just to try and keep looking for Org in this game at all. But it is a five versus four. TCA are looking strong as they break onto the third inhibitor tower of the game. There's the shockwave. Shockwave comes in. Beautiful ultimate coming from Tundra. This is what they needed. We've also got the vulnerability coming out. But Deadly it's not going to be keeping Tundra alive. Yoppa takes them down in the first kill of the game. But there's, so, there's nowhere, absolutely nowhere for looking for Org to go. Yoppa goes in again, gets knocked back. He does get taken out by Broxler. 
There's a small sliver of hope for TCA. Krugson gonna go down as well. Jet could be next. They, Jet does take the kill. It's gonna be traded back and only one member left standing for TCA. So finally looking for Org, get themselves a team fight win, and that was all off the back of Vixie. He is able to keep his team's hopes alive because he was able to shut down Deadly. Look, Deadly still had his flash up. Vixie was able to just come in from the flank, throw out his ultimate, and that just shredded through the level 11 Ezreal. Fantastic stuff coming out from him. They also punished the fact that TCA just got overzealous. The Krogson ultimate was used on an Olaf. That is not the guy you want to be trying to punish uh, when you have such a high damaging ultimate available. You can just use it as a zoning tool. Force looking for Org away from the tower because that should be your main focus. The middle inhibitor has now respawned. Looking for Org are able to defend those Nexus towers as well. And TCA, they need to be careful that they do not get too big for their britches and potentially throw this game away mmm it's so so tempting when you're as far ahead as TTR with a uh, with a massive massive goal lead to maybe not play to the, their full potential but they look to be going for this Baron here starting up vision has been taken out for looking for org we'll have to see if they're gonna if they can even respond in time well they have absolutely no vision or oh, now they do they know that steal I don't think they're gonna get there in time Nope, no chance at all. TCA take that cleaning, extending their massive goal lead up to 10k. I don't did know. Did he steal the red? I th yes, yep, he did. He the red. Yeah, Deadly taking away that red. <laughs> Adding There's insult nothing. to injury. <laughs> There's nothing that looking for org possess that TCA cannot take away. Well, right now, the top inhibitor will be respawning in about uh, 30 to a minute set. Uh, a minute seconds. <laughs> anyway, the mid inhibitor is now the priority. TCA, they have the Baron, but no minions as of yet. They still have a 11,000 gold lead, and they're going to try and use it to close out this game. It's so, so difficult for looking for Org to deny TCA these inhibitors. But if they don't, I don't know what's left for them in this game. Nutri getting pushed into the wall. Here comes Chandra, but he's kept to arms like the Shockwave. Gets the double kill. There's nowhere for looking for all to go except back to their own bounty, which is going to be helped with the keeper's verdict. They're pushing onto the Nexus towers. There's only a few minions left, but they may be enough for TCA to finish off this game entirely. There are only two members left alive. Can Vixie be the hero that her team needs? It doesn't look like it as Varlax. He's gone. Absolutely annihilated. They're going to chase right onto the fountain. They do get the ace. And TCA take this first game of two definitively. Wow. Very impressive game coming out from TCA game one. You know, I'll hold my hands up and say that I did criticize their draft. I was not a fan of the composition overall. I felt like that there wasn't much synergy behind it. I felt like that there wasn't really an overall goal with the comp, but they made it work. Krogson, he fell behind so hard during the early game, but they just played it so well. They realized they had an advantage in the bottom lane. They kept the pressure up. They got that first tower blood gold, which enabled them to start roaming around the map. We saw Raisins move to the top half, helping Yoppa get that tower as well. And that only would have been an... Um, possible if it uh thanks to jet who is just constantly ganking up in the top lane putting so much gold and emphasis onto yopper and that eventually enabled him to outscale tundra and just be the side lane threat that actually gave them two winning lanes rather than the two winning lanes that looking for org should have originally had unfortunately i feel the big issue was broxa wasn't really able to match the same sort of pressure that jet could put down and that eventually just slowly snowballed into an overwhelming lead that they had no answer for because i mean all of the gold is on Vixie, and Vixie, she did a fantastic job, but the reality is when you have that much magic resistance <laughs> built up on the side of um, TCA, because, I mean, you don't have to be scared of anything, you don't need to build armor. Vardax, it does no damage. Brox, it does no damage. The only real damage threat is Vixie and maybe Tundra. So as long as you stack all that MR, then there's no way they're going to be able to shred through you, and that's exactly what happened in these team fights, and that's exactly what enabled TCA to close that game one of those best of two. Yep, Jet working incredibly hard on that game to keep his team ahead. We're going to take a quick break before we can go into the second explosive game between these two teams. What do you think we'll be seeing in, that, in this second game? Well, uh, I have the inclination 
that perhaps the Elise will be banned away because Jet had a fantastic performance. We can see why the priority went on to this Elise. Um, but I also feel that we might see the Syndra banned away as well because clearly Vixie, very potent on the champion, had a lot of power during the early game. And I feel like you just need to take her away from it because she was just way too strong and a big reason as to why looking for Orgre able to stay alive during this game. We'll see how the strategies develop for both teams in game two. We're going to take a quick two minute ad break, but don't you dare go anywhere as we go into game two for Looking for Org against Terracotta Army.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the UK Masters, day two of week one. We, If you've just joined us, you've missed an incredible game between TCA and Looking for Org. TCA taking the first game definitively, incredibly explosive team fights. Uh, we were just talking during the break about what we expect to see in game two. Vidius, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I think that Vixie definitely needs to be taken off that Syndra because she had a phenomenal performance on it. She was really the saving grace for looking for Org, but unfortunately she could not want V5. TCH has built up too much of a big enough advantage. And as we jump into the draft for game two, uh, we'll have to see whether or not there is a big change or whether or not TCH is stick to what they've shown so far. Certainly, they had a very, very strong early game, putting a lot of pressure onto Chandra, for, exam for example. Jet doing a lot of work on that Elise. I have to wonder if we're going to see that one make it through the Chamberlain Select, as you said before. Well, in game one, we saw a lot of generic bands. We saw things like the Aurelian Soul, Jace and Rumble were taken away from looking for Org. They also had to ban away the Nidalee because they were on the red side, and they did not want to give that one away to Jet. So now that they're on the blue side, they have a little bit more flexibility, but it actually looks like they're going to stick to the same bands that they demonstrated in game one. That's pretty surprising. I mean, particularly for looking for all, given how badly that last game went, I'm very surprised that they're, they're not going to try and ban it out. Perhaps they've got some kind of plan with their picks in Chamber Select to be able to deal with that strategy if Terracotta Army go for the same kind of thing again. It could very well have been a matter of looking for org feeling like that they didn't lose because they were out drafted. Um, they lost because of individual misplays that they could rectify coming into game two. So the fact that they have really only uh, changed up this mid lane ban in the form of Syndra suggests that they're going to be trying to get themselves something like the Nidalee early on. Um, I feel like you have to bat away the Nidalee right now. Uh, but then it makes me wonder what you move your priority to because you could look to try and early pick the Elise for yourself, take that away from Jet and say, all right, Jet, what else have you got in your champion pool? But they're going to battle. This has to be a first pick Nidalee. I would be amazed if this was not a first pick Nidalee coming out from, uh, from looking for Org. It certainly seems quite likely. Uh, the Elise being banned out is the final one. That's... Yeah, it certainly leaves a lot of champions open, but it looks like looking for Org are going to think this one through properly. Maybe going to take that whole, uh, whole more thirty seconds to make their choice. The, the whole mind games. They were expecting the Nidalee ban so they could first pick something else, and now they're wondering, "Hang on, if we first pick the Nidalee, there's something else in the rotation that we end up giving away." And I wonder what their priority is because yes, the rise is still available, but we didn't see much priority on it. Uh, Poppy is still available. You could look to get that early on, given as to how great its game one performance was and how safe it is in the current meta. I think that Poppy right now would make a lot of sense. You could look to early draft your support as well, but I feel like you don't need to, given that Raisins... We talked early on about how a lot of TCA success often comes from their bottom lane, and so it wouldn't it surprise me if they saved the support pick for a later draft so that they could get a better counter pick, which means that I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe a Poppy and Cassio pick right now. You would be giving away a lot of information, but you're also picking two very strong lanes that would actually have very few answers, given that uh, Poppy, there are very few weak picks against it, and Cassio, I can't really think of many champions that would do that well into Cassio right in the current meta, but looks like my uh my predictions are completely off <laughs> and they're just gonna try and prioritize the bottom line well certainly uh that's two very powerful pickups i mean as you say the uh it does seem like these teams are going to be torn between looking to try and pick up those early powerful picks versus giving their opponents the preferable matchups in their lanes given that they've chosen their entire bottom lane this does seem, feel like it gives looking for a lot of room to maneuver well, they could also look to pick up the bot. I feel like uh, the fact that Cassio has made it so far through the draft um, is a little bit surprising because the at Worlds in particular, the big mid lane trifecta is Aurelian Soul, um, Syndra, and Cassio. And given that Syndra and Aurelian Soul are both taken off the board, Cassio to me just feels like the next best pick. But it looks like the bottom line is still going to be the priority. But you still don't give anything away if you are looking for org. And picking this bottom line up of Misfortune and Nami, that's actually very potent. We have to remember that recently, it was either this patch or the patch before, 
Uh, there was a change to Misfortune where her passive now actually does full damage to towers. So her sieging is a little bit better. But when you actually look at the two versus two, this is actually a very powerful laning phase in favor of looking for orb because you have so much harass with the Nami. The Misfortune, when she gets those empowered bubbles, actually makes her trading power so strong. And so the big weakness that they had in game one, they're now going to try and rectify here in game two. Well... Uh, as as potent as a poke is going to be in that bottom side, I do have to wonder how big of an issue the Braum Shield, the Unbreakable, is able to cancel out the Nami Tidal Wave. So if they don't plan it carefully, that could really put a crimp in their plans. But they are going to pick up the Orianna and the Graves as the third and fourth picks for TCA. Some pretty potent picks coming out here. I feel like it's super risky to blind pick an Orianna. Yes, Krogson has demonstrated his familiarity with the champion, and with Syndra taken off the board, uh, there are fewer power picks you can pick into the champion. Just trying to think, Victor, I feel like, would be a fairly safe mid laner that would do nicely into the Ori. He scales relatively well, he matches her presence in lane. But the fact that Poppy has made it so far through the draft, I think is a big mistake from the side of TCA, because Yoppa has demonstrated how good he is on the champion. And when you pair that up with Jet, uh, their duo synergy in game one demonstrated that it was just such a powerful pick that would have actually rounded out this composition very nicely because it would have given you a nice tanky front line that uh, the side of looking for all couldn't have played around. You didn't need to pick up the Orianna here. The likelihood of SK picking that one away, I feel, was pretty low. Uh, and you definitely didn't need to pick the Graves because the, they're not going to pick up their jungler. It's already been picked. So you could have picked the Poppy. Um, and now... TCA are put on the back foot where they have to wonder, okay, what do we now pick into the poppy? Because they're actually fairly limited. And this is quite an interesting pick. Wow, Yoppa taking the gangplank. That's a really surprise. I'm really surprised to see that. Certainly gonna have a lot of range for us to put down onto Tundra. But not the most conventional picks necessarily. No, I mean, uh last time I saw Gangplank was brought out by Expect. Uh, yeah, from G2 at Worlds. But other than that, Gangplank has really kind of fallen out of favor. But I think the, the one thing I do quite like about the Gangplank is when you think of Poppy, she's not really considered lane dominant. She's not a powerhouse laner that just ruffle stomps any opponent that she goes up against. Um, and Gangplank actually has a fairly weak laning phase because he he doesn't trade very well. He's very much based on poke damage, and a lot of people can play around that because of how difficult it is to actually use the barrels at early levels. So when you go up against a Poppy, it's actually quite favorable for the Gangplank because he's allowed to get through the laning phase without struggling too much. He can just sit there, focus on farming, and just prioritize getting that Trinity Force and scaling into the mid game. So I understand the pick. I'm just not sure how it works in this composition because you do have a fairly good teamfight composition, but it's very heavily based on scaling. Uh, because the Orianna, she gets strong once she's completed the Morale and Omicron, as we saw from game one with the pretty crazy shockwaves that she was throwing out. Uh, mm. Graves definitely takes a while to ramp up. His early pressure is going to be completely outclassed by the Nidalee. Um, and then the Ezreal Braum is nowhere near going to have the same sort of pressure as they did in game one. So when you look across the board, TCA are pretty much losing two out of their three lanes with mid lane just being a very even mid lane matchup which is very much just farming because both there might be a bit of back and forth trading but unless one mid laner makes a massive mistake uh it's going to be very difficult for the oriana to just collapse under the pressure and the same for the victor so when you have two winning lanes combined with a nidalee going up against a graves I feel like the early game is going to be heavily in favor of looking for all because that nidalee can just sit in the enemy jungle and make that graves life difficult Hmm. I mean, it's a stark contrast between this game and the last game. Looking at, as you mentioned, how well Terracotta Army were able to apply the double crowd control up between the jungler and the top lane to really make life difficult uh, for Tundra. This time, of course, not really having any serious form of crowd control to be able to apply the same thing. Though on the same notion, Tundra is also going to find it hard to nail down Yoppa since he's going out to eat his oranges and get away from that wall stun that Tundra used to such great effect during points in the last game. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Choke points are going to be an area that both teams... Well, it, I was going to say that you have to avoid if you're TCA, but then when you look at Gangplank, Orianna, and an Ezreal, they actually do pretty well in choke points. So, um, I, Choke points could actually be a big explosive point for both teams to fight, but both are actually very reliant on these mid-game spikes, in particular the Victor and the Orianna. Um, 
Poppy typically wants two items because that's where she breaks, uh, uh, reaches a tank breaking point in which she becomes unkillable like we saw in game one. Um, but Varnax is just very lane dominant because of how much innate damage the, uh, the Misfortune has from things like her passive and her W and her Q. Uh, it actually just makes her very potent during the laning phase. And I feel like, again, it comes down to this bottom lane advantage where in game one, TCA were the ones that were able to exert a huge amount of pressure and build up a lead and get that first tower gold, which then converted into the rest of the map being under their control. But now, looking for Org have an opportunity to do exactly what they lost to in game one because Misfortune Army is just so potent. And yes, the wall does block the Nami ultimate, but they don't really need the Nami ultimate to exert pressure during the very early stages of the laning phase. So gonna have to keep our eyes on the bottom lane and also just keep an eye on what Broxa does because I feel like when you have so many winning lanes going in your favor it's gonna be very easy for him to just walk into the enemy jungle and steal away as much as he wants. Yeah I mean it's it's gonna be so so hard to deny the poke in the bottom lane I mean as well having the sustained advantage for looking for org I can very much see TCA having a very hard time. To touch on the point you made earlier about the both teams wanting to make use of choke points I do wonder uh, since both teams have such powerful abilities in a limited area, if both teams perhaps will try and maneuver each other to be the ones in those choke points before they take the proper fights. Well, uh, the usual places that you're going to be seeing that are things like around the dragon fights or the baron fights, where people will be forced into these narrow corridors. Uh, but to force those, you have to have prior vision control. And vision control is going to be very important. I was quite impressed with the amount of wards that TCA were putting up, especially when they did decide to go for plays like that Baron. Notice that the top half of the map was just littered with blue wards coming out from TCA to guarantee that that Baron was just going to be free for the taking. And um, if we see a similar sort of... Uh, level of vision control here in game two, then I imagine that playing around these choke points could definitely go in favor of whoever has the better uh, setup for these objectives. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of potential for people to get caught off guard. I mean, certainly, uh, Tundra, at least not in Yoppa's case, but certainly in other members being able to catch people out. But we'll have to see as these teams charge out onto the rift itself. Do you think we'll see any early level one aggression? Uh, unlikely. Usually you just form a line of scrimmage. Um, and as I say that, this is why you can't ask me to predict stuff, because I'm really <laughs> bad at it, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good at predicting champion picks, but other than that, no. I can never... It's trying to get into the mind of a UK player, and like that's just something that no analyst should ever attempt to do. It's a, it's a dangerous thing. It can, can drive some analysts crazy, you know? Um, but in any case, it mostly just looks like that SK, SK, <laughs> looking for Org's bottom lane, want to try and um, stop any early sort of Krugs. So them posturing up in a way that not only gives them good early control over the lane, notice the deep ward you can see, so that there's no sort of sneaky cheese coming out from Deadly and Raisins. But now they're also posturing in a, in a manner that enables them to just walk up and force them away if they try to do any Krugs. Tundra, now he needs to be careful. Tundra, yeah, he may have made a mistake going in really hard. Broxa may be a little bit too far away. And I don't know if this is the best of ideas. Tundra is still low, of course, a, a tough one to put away, that poppy. Well, looks like that uh, he is just trying to delay the camp as much as he can, but he will lose a lot of his health for it. Yopper can be training some of that health back, but he has started with the mana crystal and three health bonds. So you can already see he's going for the early uh, or the, the the farm lane. Basically, he's not looking to try and harass. He's just looking to get a bit of extra mana. Last hit with the Q, stall for as long as he can, wait for that Trinity Force, and just basically buy time. Well, Tundra does have the ability, of course, to get back a little bit of health each time he's going to be hitting Yoppa, as well as that Corrupting Potion. So, he, at least for the time being, he's going to be able to hold... <laughs> he's been able to do a lot of more damage to Yoppa than you might expect up in that top lane. But we'll have to see how it develops. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, ooh, a lot of damage down to Nutri. Yep, Nutri is going to get stunned up. The exhaust coming down to Deadly. They're trying to get the stun onto Vilex. They do get it. It's so dangerous for Vilex. Trying desperately to get away. The heal does come down. Now Nutri has to flash away as well. And whew, not a great trade. We're looking for Org spot lane. So we have to backtrack very early on to the lane. Um, simply because what happened was looking for Org's bot. 
attempted to move into the enemy jungle. How? Look oh, at Jet. Godric could be in trouble. He's getting the, the flashes are going to be exchanged. The first blood goes across to Jet. And Jet making his presence known in the top half of the map once again. Broxa was nowhere near. Jet decided to just clear the top half of his jungle. He realized the amount of trading that was going on uh, in the top lane and tried to take advantage of it. Gets himself first blood, gives Yoppa the first assist. And I feel like we're starting to see a trend here where we just see a lot of ganking pressure in the top lane, but the rest of the map are left to fend for themselves. Yeah, really decisive play from Jet coming out there. I mean, he's already set himself up as a terror in the previous game. Doesn't look like anything's going to change anytime soon. Is still hanging around the top side. Might be going for a little bit of counter jungling. Smart from Broxer, um, largely because he realizes that the gank happened in the top, and the only way it would happen is if uh, Jet just cleared the top half of his uh, jungle and then went straight for the gank which means that he can steal away the blue buff. It's not going to hurt the Graves too much, but now that Deadly and Raisin have been forced under their tower, it enables Broxus to get not only get good vision control, steal away a lot of the camps, but he can also look to potentially set up a dive. I think it's risky with a Nidalee, especially going up against a Brawn, who still has his exhaust, but it is an option available to them. Well, we see. Looking for Org. Managing to finally get some of that poke to stick. Of course, we have got that first dragon up and available for the teams. If they want to take it, the Rift Scuttler has been taken down in this bottom lane. So there's a small advantage for looking for Org if they just if they can find that window of opportunity. Certainly can be, and you can see that right now the Deadly and Raisins are struggling in the two versus two, largely because of what happened early on, um, where. They went for the early Grom. They wanted to try and get themselves um, the early level two. And because Vilags and Nutri were so concentrated on getting harassed down, they didn't actually manage the minion wave properly. And that enabled Deadly and Raisins to get enough experience to get the early level two, force the all in, and that burnt a lot of summoner spells. But now they're not actually taking advantage of it in any way. Jet is still in the top half of the map, and they can't really punish simply due to the amount of sustain, but they're going to try and force it now. Yep, yeah, Deadly gets knocked up though. The damage is pouring in Nutri so so low raisins the one to take the kill up in the top Broxa does take out Jet but Vardags is in trouble what is going he, on <laughs> he gets taken out Deadly gets the kill and that's four kills on the table for TCA only five and a half minutes into the game so that was a three for one in favor of TCA because there was action literally everywhere on the map Yoppa though, I think the action's not over yet. Have a look in the top lane. Yeah, Teleport is coming in. They do oh, manage shit. to land the Javelin. <laughs> Big for Broxa. Tundra is there. They're gonna feed the kill across <laughs> the Tundra. A nice bit of revenge up in the top lane. All right, so looking for Org are able to get something back. They punished the fact that Yoppa tried to push in his wave. He should have really just backed off. Um, a little bit of a misplay from him giving away that kill. But nevertheless, TCA still have the kill advantage, have the gold advantage. And this all stems from what we were talking about early on. Look at the level difference between Broxa and Jet. While Jet was still able to get himself that first kill, uh, or the first blood even, up in the top lane, he sacrificed so much farm to do it, and Broxa was just farming away. He was getting that early level advantage. And he was level 6 when Jet was only level 4, which means that he could just walk into the enemy jungle and make it his. The moment he found Jet, he punished him. He is able to get that solo kill out, but it doesn't matter because the rest of his lanes are losing. The two versus two all in is so strong from Deadly and Raisins that they're able to get themselves a kill on the bottom. And Yoppa, he'd picked himself up a Sheen. Tundra clearly didn't respect the damage and ends up giving away his life as well. So honestly, impressive stuff coming out from the laners of TCA, but Broxa is still a massive threat that TCA needs to somehow find a way of dealing with. We are, of course, seeing TCA setting up vision around this dragon. It looks like both teams have got a got reasonably well covered. Brawling continues, of course, oh as well in the top lane. Tundra coming off a little bit worse for it. Uh, in the mid lane, Vixie getting chewed through. A, and it's a little bit like last game. A lot of damage looking for Org struggling to stand up to it. Yeah, I mean, I seem to be 
off my prediction game because these these lanes should go in favor of Tundra and in the bottom, but it's all come from these early kills. We see a fight in the bottom. Yeah, Volix gets caught. The true shot barrage comes through, but they can't quite finish the job. Still, a huge chunk of damage being pushed through. I'm looking for Org. It looks like they are going to try and sustain and stay in this bottom lane, but we've seen again and again how dangerous TCA are in this bottom lane and how much pressure they've got to be able to force through a kill as Tundra continues to have a terrible time of things. Gets knocked up, but he's pushing back into the tower. They trade kills between the two of them and Tundra is spoiling for a fight. I feel like that was a misplay from Yoppa. That play was always going to happen. You could see the positioning from the poppy moving in a way that would not underneath the turret he still had his flasher if he'd flashed the moment that poppy had gone for the heroic charge he could have got out but we see oh, more action for a second. Vixie is in trouble the challenge smite comes through but able to use the ghost to get away those two mobility summoners really really handy for making sure that Vixie doesn't get punished as in the bottom the bot lane. Okay, it's Italy. Yes, we've got the Nilly lurking in the box. The Broxer be very patient for quite a long time, but decides eventually to give up the possibility of ganking. Go back to that farming, which has been working out pretty well so far. So I think a ward was dropped in that tribush by Raisins. Um, so I think Broxer mostly just spent his time clearing the vision out. Wasn't able to find any successful gank, but he is now level 8. He is actually on par with the highest level on his team and in the game. So he well, is farming up a storm right now. He's also on the Infernal Drake. He's hopped across to make sure he can't be seen, and he's going for it really, really quickly. They take that dragon, and not bad at all for looking for Org, taking that early Infernal Drake. Smart from Broxa, taking advantage of the high mobility and maneuverability of... Now Broxa... Oh, Broxa has to flash away. Can he get away from Jet? It's gonna be tight. He can't get across the wall. Jet takes him out. Their second kill of the game. Good collapse from Krogson. It was greedy from Broxer to go for the scuttle grab, and he ends up getting punished for it. He should have just jumped out over the wall, been happy with the Drake, and now this is going to give so much more control over to TCA. Look at this. Nutri has just backed away. Jet is moving into the enemy jungle, trying to get some vision down as well as steal away camps. I felt like TCA could have actually forced that tier one in the bottom, um, but unfortunately for them, they didn't realize the opportunity was available, and they're not going to pick up that objective, so... Only a kill gained in favor of TCA, but still, that's not a bad thing to gain. Well, I mean, you say that. the Certainly in the previous game, we saw TCA be very, very aggressive and very decisive with their map movements, making their way in and forcing out these turrets early on. It seems like this this time we're not seeing quite as much aggression. Yoppa being aggressed onto by Tundra. This could be the turnaround of the century. The knock-up. Can he finish the job? It's so close. The flash Ooh. is being exchanged. Can Tundra close the distance? He should not. Jet is in the area, but keep an eye out for Broxa. That Jamin doesn't quite find his target. It, but it would have been the end of him. Support, ah. <laughs> supports clashing down the bottom lane in a fight over vision. That was actually insane. Like I, I think Yoppa survived with about one HP because uh, note that the oh, speaking of low HP, oh. Deadly and Vardax going into a death battle with each other, and he walks into <laughs> and loving arms of. Ray who's more than happy to pick up that kill. Oh, that's fantastic. He flashes away, he thinks he's safe, and then he just presses S because he realizes, ah, there's a problem here. Uh, has to give away the kill. Gets caught out of position, Krogs, and now the focus. Not gonna be able to get collapsed on his raisins lying in wait. Trying to go spear fishing, but not gonna find any objectives. So, a bit of map movements coming out from both teams, trying to find some sort of play. Nothing really going to come about. So TCA still controlling the early game. Something that we talked about during Champion Select was that really the early game should have gone in favor to the side of looking for Org. They have a Nidalee. And they also had winning matchups up in the top lane and the bottom as long as no major advantages were given away. And that's exactly what happened. TCA, they got kills in the bottom lane. They got kills up in the top. And that's just enabling these weaker lanes to have much more success and come out not only with farm advantages, but massive gold advantages overall. We are, of course, seeing TCA making their way into looking for Orcs jungle, trying to take away their gold income, at least jungler-wise. We might be seeing Jet potentially in position to try and make a gank happen, but he might be the one to get caught out. They are moving in, which we can see on the map. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to... No, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to force anything 
quite at this moment. Tundra and Yoppa just continuing to go back and forth. Trinity Force has now been completed for the Gangplank. Big pickup for him. Uh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, Vixie... Ooh, big crit down in the bottom lane. Uh, Vixie has also completed her first Hexcore upgrade. Um, but have a look at this jet trying to move in aggressively onto this blue buff. Oriana moving in as well. Has the positioning advantage. Yeah, both mid laners are there. We're having seeing Brox are having forced to take away the blue. But now we are seeing Tundra starting to seem dominant up in this top lane. A lot of damage being put from Diapa. The knockout with the keeper's verdict. Here comes the cannon barrage. Push out of it! Tundra kicks a kill. Jet there to try and steal one away. But it's not happening. And we're seeing it, looking for Org, managing to turn back the aggression, which has been against them for such a long time. Vixie gonna get pulled in with the shockwave, has no mana, but manages to walk this one away. Ghost again, proving its weight in gold. But Krogs are gonna be forcing Vixie back. Tundra picking up that kill up in the top lane was massive for the side of looking for Org, because they have been desperately trying to find a little bit more leeway on the map and picking up this first tower gold will help us to see a TP in the bottom lane. Yeah, double TP coming in the bottom lane. This is going to be so, so dicey. We see Yoppa around the side trying to find the opportunity. Here come the barrels coming in. Oh. in a lot of trouble, has to flash away. Varnox is there as well. Unleash the tower. Yoppa secures the kill. The bullet time coming in. The tra kills are being traded back. Yoppa is <laughs> has come down. Tundra is there trying to secure the kill. Deadly has got a little bit of mana left in tank rise. Tundra does not. A true shot barrage. Deadly oh, shot to do it. Deadly. <laughs> Trade the kills back, and wow, what a fight! That was um, an interesting exchange in the bottom. <laughs> uh, so it started with the double teleport coming out from both Yoppa and Tundra. The teleport was spotted by looking for Org from initially Yoppa, who was coming in from the tri brush. So immediately Tundra came in into the lane to try and dissuade the gank. It does not stop them thanks to a massive gank that was picked up by Yoppa, who he used the barrels to just force Nutri and Vardax to split up. He gets the kill onto Nutri. Tundra trades that back uh, thanks to forcing Yoppa underneath the turret. And, a, and an interesting bullet time coming out from Vardax. So things are looking fairly promising for TCA, but then Deadly, he gets greedy for the kill. He wants to try and taste Tundra under the tower. And he ends up giving away his life, which honestly I feel like was a big mistake. He didn't need to do that. That kill was not so important that it needed to be died for and gone for. He could have just taken the uh, pressure advantage and been happy with that as we see three members in the bottom lane. Yep, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the looking for Org's bottom lane. Exhaust comes out of Vardag, Nutri taken out. Vardag desperately trying to get away, but nowhere to go. And suddenly TCA are walking all over this bottom lane. Dragon up for grabs. Oh, well, Broxa has started it, and it's actually snuck it away. The wow. second Infernal Drake, while that whole gang was going off. He moved into the jungle, and now look at Vixie. Oh, Crookshin does get the kill. It's going to get traded back, though. Broxa is so, so low. It's going to sneak away. Raisin's looking to try and catch Broxa out if he can. It's going to be tight. He just misses. Crookshin oh. takes it. The snipe from downtown by Deadly, picking up another Krogson's efforts were not in vain. In a one versus two, he gets a kill, and then thanks to the ultimate from Deadly, they're able to turn it into a two for one as we have more action in the top. Yoppa getting chewed down, has to flash away. Tundra takes another kill. That's got to feel great for the top laner. But it doesn't matter because while Yoppa loses his turret in the bottom lane, and it is a tier two turret. TCA still have full control of this early game, but we're seeing what we saw in game one and a Poppy going ham. He is 5, 4, and 1 night right now. And while he has given away a lot of kills, he's also picking up a bunch for himself. Notice the amount of armor that he's actually stacked up, which is great when you're going up against an AD jungler in Graves, an AD top laner in the form of Gangplank, and Ezreal, who typically doesn't actually build that much armor penetration. The one person he's really going to be ha have to be afraid of is Krogson on this Orianna, who, based on what we saw on game one, can definitely dish out the damage. Well, how significant is it going to be uh, that TCA have managed to take away both bottom side Towers, how does that warp how the game plays out? Well, it largely means that Yoppa has to be very careful uh, because 
often what you can do is if you as you've done swap the lanes around you want to try and push it a little bit more it's very easy to overextend because now the wave isn't going to be pushed back until much further and now tundra actually in a one versus yep. two this is an interesting little development going forward doesn't look like either team are going to force it through uh, it looks like a possibility of them maybe trying to turn it into a cheeky kill but nothing coming of it this time round. So look at the positioning of Yopper right now. He actually forced the minion wave all the way into the tier three tower in the bottom lane because he noticed every single member of looking for org in the top half of their jungle. Um, I felt like he could have gone for an actual dive onto the mid lane simply because the wave was pushing in TCA's favor. Vixie was going to be forced underneath her turret. And when you had the gangplank ultimate available as well as the uh, ultimate on top of Krogson, it can be a lot of damage, and it can easily set up for a kill, as we now see Yoppa taking a lot of damage from Tundra. Yes, I think Tundra looking for another kill of his own. Keep an eye out for Krogshin. Yoppa is trying to play like he hasn't got support just in off-screen. Bardex is well in trouble. He's going to be trying to get stunned up. Tundra is trying desperately to get away. Here comes the bullet time, though! So much damage pouring towards the TCA, and now they're on the back foot, having to run past the tower. Rox is secured the kill while Tundra goes down. Vixie taken down so, so low. The kill isn't fully pushed through. Deadly does get it, but is he traded back? That shutdown gold, making it more worthwhile for looking for Org. I actually like the play from Deadly, largely because he actually just goes in. Uh, and um, he realizes he's not going to get away from that situation. So he decides to just trade his life to guarantee a one-for-one one, rather than rely on the fact that he might be able to get away. He doesn't burn any summoner spells um, other than the heal that he had burnt earlier on to try and save his support. Uh, but still, overall, that was uh, two for two where looking for Org made a play in the top half of the map after seeing TCA force a play in the bottom. I think that this is overall a little bit better for the side of TCA because you're getting another kill down onto the Orianna. She's going to be able to work faster towards her next item, which I believe is going to be the Rylize. However, you could also go for the um, Deathcap second. I feel like Deathcap second isn't actually the most optimal. And given how strong Rylize is right now, it would make a little bit more sense. Uh, and there it is. So she's going to pick up the Rylize and it, it will offer a lot more utility and also a fair amount of damage moving into the mid game. Yeah, I mean, the... <laughs> certainly a very very potent uh, potent item pickup looking for org uh, uh, seem like feel like they are constantly in danger from uh, what tca can bring out but we are seeing tca starting to work their way around the barren area a little bit more now all right while that is important i just want to highlight yoppa can you please buy some boots uh, i know the damage <laughs> is important but you could you could buy some boots mate i mean it's all important. That base movement speed would help a lot getting out of these sticky situations that you often find yourself in. Uh, regardless, besides his lack of boots, um, he has picked up the Ghost Blade. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> just buy some boots, please, Yopper, please. Uh, <laughs> Evidently, are... a long time Cassio people there. Yeah, exactly. You're not playing Cassio, right? So moving back to the Baron, as you rightly said, Skullcrab Crab Vision has been gained for the side of TCA. Look at how slow he is. He can't get away. <laughs> I think you're right. This could have been crucial in Tundra being able to make these kills stick. I mean, certainly has got a burst of movement speed from the Yumus and of course from the Trinity Force as well. But it seems an odd choice to not to pick to go entirely for the and neglect the boosts, especially considering that long. Sword could have been boost. And now Yopper gonna get knocked up again. You're gonna find it tricky to get away from Tundra. Has got that boost of movement speed. But can he finish it off? No, Tundra just falling short. And Jet takes their life away. So he baited using the lack of boots, trying to draw <laughs> Tundra in and say, hey, I can't get away from you, but I don't need to because my jungler is nearby. The Scuttle Crab in the river enabled Jet to get down to the bottom lane just that bit faster. And now they're going for this Ocean Drake Brock, so he wants to steal. What a oh. huge, huge damage crunching with that amazing ultimate. They take the dragon away as well. And moment by moment, TCA are becoming more and more unassailable. The hidden balls are the deadliest. And Krogson just coming in with the sneak attack from the flank. They had no idea that he was there. He gets the two-man ultimate off. Just destroys Vixie before she can even respond. That guarantees the dragon. And it may very well guarantee the, the Baron. 
Well, they have got some members in position, but Crouchon doing work to try and make sure they don't get anywhere near this Baron whatsoever. They're gonna keep chewing it through, and they're desperately, desperately looking for Olga, trying to find a way to this Baron. I don't think it's gonna happen. They really want to take it away, but they're not going to. TCA get another huge chunk of gold, and they make it a nearly for their troubles. Oh, Crouchon going in really deep. The exhaust comes down. They don't get knocked up. Raisins isn't going to take out, but Boxer gets stunned. Tundra down the bottom lane. His old foe, Yoppa, again going at each other. We've seen the Yumus be burned. Deadly goes up against Vixie. They do get stunned. The cooldowns come up for Vixie and they secure the kill. Tundra may have bitten off more than they can chew. Desperately trying to get away from Yoppa. Managed to walk away. Good old boots. Oh, the cannon barrage out of nowhere. Vixie gets blown up again by the shockwave. And the bullet time finally finishes off Yoppa. Wizzing support against mid lane. Crusher goes down to Nutri. And then he gets killed by collateral damage. Everything is happening all over the map, all the time, forever. What is this game? I think that was, what, nine kills in the space of two minutes? Really Everybody good. died. There's only one Baron left available for Jet because CCA, they just wanted to fight. That was absolutely insane. I've lost track of who died, when they died. I... What does it even matter? We saw a crazy amount of action. TCA still hold the gold advantage. It is 12,000 in their favor. 11,000. It doesn't matter. I can't do math, but TCA, they have everything that they need to close out this game. Wow. I don't think I've seen a team fight. I don't even know if we could fight. It was over such a wide area, such a display of violence from both teams. I'm really glad to see Looking Forward still willing to fight this one out. But Boxer <laughs> may be in trouble. Has to go across the wall. Is again very slippery. But there's no Baron to fight for anymore. So I don't know if Looking for Org needs to be up in this top area. Well, they need to take advantage of this Baron that they have right now. Um... They, ha they have Yoppa in the sideline. He's finally bought some boots as he goes for another 1v1 against Tundra, which he should be able to easily win right now. Well, yeah, Yoppa has got that last whisper. He's going to get... He's got to be disappointed for Tundra after having that wonderful period of time. They could actually do something about Yoppa dropping down the cannon barrage. Keep an eye out for Crocsion, who's going to try and surely drop down. The damage doesn't even need to use the ultimate to finish off Tundra. And that's going to be so frustrating as they move in down this bottom lane, inexorably moving towards the base, and even more turrets being taken down. Well, Tundra overstepped once again. He didn't need to. He knows that TCA have full control of the map right now. And in all honesty, even if he could win the one versus one against Gangplank, it just isn't worth it this late into the game when you realize that TCA are going to look to try and push into your base. You just try and push out the minion wave as far as you can. You delay the siege. And instead, he just gives away his life. And he's fallen to this trap time and time again. Now, with the numbers advantage and the, the ultimate... Sh the shockwave! The collateral damage misses! Vixie is trying to frontline this jet. He's underneath the tower. Want this tower so badly, but they don't get it. That was a small misplay, which could have secured them another kill. But they're still, still so far ahead. Six turrets to one. Vardag's taken so low, but Deadly gets a return javelin and gets a kidney to the. Roxa is so low. They can't quite do it. No, they can. The double shot comes through and takes the kill. And Bronx is the one to get the credit for it. But wow, so much fighting, even in what could be the closing moments of the game. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are looking to improve at least, it's not how you siege a base, uh, as exciting as it is. <laughs> uh, mindlessly diving underneath the turret for a kill is not always the most reliable method uh, of engagement. Nevertheless, TCA haven't given away too much. If anything, they've somehow built uh, a fur an even further gold advantage. It's now extended to about 13,000 from the previous 11. Uh, and a lot of that has come from the kills that they have continued to pick up, but also from the massive farm advantages that they have in the mid and even in the jungle. This Graves heavily has now outscaled the uh, Nidalee, especially uh, considering how strong Nidalee was early on, being level... 14 to level 16 now is actually pretty crazy um, when so much of the early game was going in Brox's favor. But it all stems from 
honestly just so many poor fights so many bad one versus ones small skirmishes just constantly going in the favor of tca enabling them to pick up a very early baron once again and gain full control but now we have to question whether or not tca can efficiently close out the game because we saw moments in game one if they can throw um, but now tundra gonna be the target focus once again is gonna just helicopter his way out of that one um, well, wait, wait. That's that's the nice thing uh, for Tundra. Can just threaten to deploy the Keeper's Verdict and let it run down. We're seeing the engage in the in the mid lane, but they don't manage to make it stick. They manage to chunk down Vixie, but they're running out of minions to take this one. Vixie again gets, takes a big metal ball to the face, and looking for all don't seem like they can really uh, stay underneath the tower with that amount of damage coming in. They are getting chunked down. Mm -hmm. Good damage down onto Vixie. Tundra once again going for the trades onto Yop, but I feel like he shouldn't commit too hard. He should just be trading back and forth. It's the ultimate from Vardags. That was a beautiful tally to bullets and a massive... To job! Raisins is so low. They're trying to chase him down, but they can't quite finish it. Jet is there as well. They're dancing around them, frustrating looking for Ork, who desperately, desperately wants to get something as we close in on 30 minutes in this game. Well, finally. Oh, it looks like Deadly gets a kill. <laughs> Deadly takes it away. And I have to feel that TCA are just toying with looking for Vixie is so low. Tundra brings Deadly right into Vixie's face. That may have been a mistake. And they've got the open inhibitor to take whenever they want. Okay, TCA needs to get a little bit more organized. Well, Tundra is continuing to go in this fight. Never end, Tundra! He's got the Guardian Angel though. I don't think this fight is going to continue, but these teams love to fight. If all, in all honesty, it's largely just a matter of looking for Org, trying to defend what they have left and trying to find some avenue back into the game. Whereas TCA, they're just being far too uncoordinated. They feel like the game is theirs for the taking. They're playing a little bit overconfident, trying to go for plays that really they shouldn't be attempting. But it doesn't matter largely because of the insurmountable goal lead they have at 30 minutes into the game. They're going to walk away, pick up the Cloud Dragon. And now they should really just base together, pick up whatever items and gold they can spend, and then just regroup into a 1-4 setup. Have the mid lane push in their favor, rotate the Ori round to the bottom side of the map, have the Gangplank sitting on the top lane, and just slowly work your way into looking for Org's base. There should be a clean game end for TCA, but they're making it much more difficult by constantly going for these consistent skirmishes. Yeah, I mean, it's, if there's any way for looking for all back into this game, it's a TCA I'm getting a little bit too comfortable with their lead. I mean, certainly, we've got another Baron up for TCA to take. I don't know if looking for all can realistically do anything about this. I'm afraid for them they're just going to hang around until they get ambushed in their own jungle, or at least for. We've got a Death Push here, but it's not a particularly dangerous looking one. Oh, five members strong, posturing on the Baron. I feel like the Baron is the risky play from TCA. In game one, they recognized that going for the Baron could be how they throw. And now in game two, they're trying to force it as Brox. It takes a chunk of damage from the gang fight. Baron has been started up for TCA. They're chewing through it. Looking for being kept at arm's length once again. And Baron being taken very close. Brox has to try and get away. Nutrient trouble drops. The tidal wave, these are the confined spaces we were talking about before the game even began. But nothing comes of it, and they're forced to flee back to their base at top speed. Alright, so TCA do force the Baron and they get it away. Just using the Gangplank to zone their opponents off the objective enables them to take it at relative ease. And now they're going to try and take advantage of that big minion wave they have in the top. They've rotated Yopper down to the bottom lane. And this is the setup that we've wanted to see for the last 10 minutes, in all honesty. Is now we'll see if they can finally get an inhibitor and start to close out this game. <laughs> Massive fight! A huge miss shockwave opens the door for looking for... They're trying to go in, but there's so much damage pouring their way. No one wants to be the one to go down as Yoba takes down the inhibitor down the bot lane. And he may make a move in on the Nexus Towers as well. Yoppa working towards those Nexus Towers and the Nexus. And that's drawing members away as TCA look to try and break into the top lane. This Vardags does secure the kill. Beautiful split push from Yoppa dividing the attention 
of looking for Org. They may well lose another inhibitor. Vardix gets exploded. And another inhibitor goes down in favor of TCA. Looking for Org. Dead men walking. Yoppa does take the Nexus Tower. Which <laughs> does sacrifice his life for it. But there's so little left in this game for looking for Org. What can they salvage? Well, four versus three right now. Look at Vixie going for Deadly. Deadly goes down. Tundra is very, very low, but so hard to take out on low health. Jet is going to provide the front line, making sure they don't take another kill. But it's such a massive mountain. They're looking for all quick. Even can contemplate trying to get through. Cogshan still so dangerous, even on low health. So... Once again, TCA demonstrating their over-eagerness to try and dive onto the Nexus, but they do still get themselves to inhibitors. Yoppa drawing pressure was actually a great way to enable TCA to break into the base. Unfortunately, TCA just got overzealous. They tried to force a fight rather than just prioritize the objective, and they gave away Raisin's life to succeed that. That Baron buff is going to wear off, but now they can just group as five members and go for that dive. Yes, they have a 16,000 gold lead, yet they are still struggling to close out this game. We are approaching the 35-minute mark, and the longer this game goes, the more windows of opportunity you are giving for looking for Org to find a way back into the game. Look at Deadly. He's at six deaths. That's way too many deaths for an Ezreal, and it just shows how overly aggressive he has playing, and in all honesty, how a little bit too cocky he has been, uh, considering the gold lead that they've been able to accrue. Well, it, we'll have to see how it develops for TCA in this tournament as a whole. The tower uh, is in so much peril here. The last tower, or last inhibitor tower. The nice knockout bullet time comes down. Kwokshan taking so, so low. They can't finish the job. The knockouts are there, but can they follow it up? They're taking so much damage. The glacial fissure comes down. Doesn't really catch anyone. Tundra from the back. Kwokshan just avoids the javelin. But can they take them out? The shockwave. Doesn't manage to get the job done, but Vardag's getting chewed through. Vardag is going to be taken out. A Tundra is so, so low. Trying to get away from Jet. There's no escaping the Jet, though. And they've got the last remnants of their base to defend. They've only got one Nexus Tower, and they've got four members powering their way in. Can they do anything about this? Raisins is there. The last Nexus Tower goes down. The last Tower of the game. Vixie is stunned up! He goes down! Nutri is dead as well! It's only Brocks are left to see the fall of the Nexus and TCA's 2 0 win. TCA coming out with a dominant performance over looking for Org. And in all honesty, that comes as a little bit of a surprise. Yes, both these teams considered top tier in the UK scene, but I am surprised at the performance from looking for Org. I expected a little bit more. Perhaps it is a result of using their substitute top laner as opposed to having Rifty on the lineup. Usually they are used to playing with Rifty and his style, and when you bring Tundra back in, who perhaps hasn't had the opportunity to play as much with the team as he would like, you tend to have the not the same level as to what you're used to coming out from the top half of the map. But all of the blame really can't go on to Tundra because there were so many things happening at all points in the game. Tundra giving away kills early on in the top lane in the 1v1 definitely hurt. But also in the bottom lane, Vardax and Nutri losing out on the two versus two when in reality they should have been the ones having the advantage. They gave away so many kills that they really shouldn't have. And then the fact that Broxer allowed the Graves to come back into the game after the massive advantage that he had grown for himself in the early game just demonstrates the fact that, in all honesty, TCA just straight up outperformed. And there was a lot of misplays come the mid and late game from TCA, but I feel like you can excuse them given the, how impressive their, their first 10 minutes of the game really was. Well, I was going to say it before TCA powered through and demolished looking for Org's base, but I have to wonder if that confidence, that cockiness, might punish them a little bit as the tournament progresses, and maybe they run into a similar situation that their opponents are able to turn around and turn what could have been a certain victory into a defeat. Well, they still have plenty of time to find out. They still have plenty of time to sure or iron out their weaknesses. Nevertheless, getting a 2-0 in the first week of group stages is definitely a fantastic way to go. And it's really going to set you up for success moving forward throughout the rest of the tournament. 
Yeah, well, we'll have to take a quick break, but don't, again, don't go anywhere at all. We've got XL Esports going up against UK Legends in of the best of two games. I can only hope that it's as explosive as the last game we've seen.
Hello stream, production NVC here. Just to let you guys know, we're currently setting up the next game, XL versus UK Legends. Videos will be back with Wesker Biscuit. We're just waiting on the final player from UK Legends. We've got all of XL in the lobby so far, but don't go anywhere. We'll be a little under five minutes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second day of the UK Masters. We've just had an incredible series between TCA and Looking for Org, which TCA took definitively in that last game, 2-0, getting the full three points to carry them forward. Going into the second series of this evening, we're going to be seeing the UK Legends taking on XL Esports. Whew. I can only hope this is exciting. Yeah, well, it should be. So for those that might not know, uh, the UK Legends will be playing on the blue side for game one. And up in the top lane, they have Shikari. In the jungle, they have Bowser. In the mid lane is Energy Ice Cold. And their AD carry and support will be Sebla and UK. And for XL, they're bringing Tolkien in the top lane, Scudsy in the jungle, Luxy in the mid lane, Jokerism for AD carry and Orcs, propping them up with the support in the bot. 
Yeah, so both these teams, uh, definitely a couple of familiar faces, especially for me as I used to be a player for XL Esports. That was somewhat of a, a, a long time ago now, but it's nice to see that some of the familiar faces like the Jokerism as well as Scudzy. Um, so we'll have to see how well they perform. But Energy Ice Cold, definitely a mid laner uh, well, that I used to play against regularly. And I actually remember him being quite the Oriana player. I wonder if he still plays it currently. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how these guys play out. Yeah, I mean, these it's wonderful to see these teams, especially these players who've been around for such a long time. I have to imagine that XL have got some really, really strong synergies together. As we're going to pop into Champions League any moment now, and we'll see what fresh bands this new series are going to bring us. Yeah, well, in game one, we saw a lot of generic bands, things like the Aurelian Soul, the Jace, just things that are very strong in the current meta uh, that neither team really wanted to play against. And uh, sometimes you'll often see a lot of target bands in the UK scene. Some players very well known for being uh, somewhat of a, a one trick. Uh, but mm. <laughs> given the caliber of these teams that we are now commentating over, I would imagine that no such foolery will be happening today. Well, certainly strong picks being taken out by both teams, like Kennen and Syndra. We've both seen them be pretty effective thus far. Jace as well being taken out for UK Legends. There's a lot on the table. Nidley proved, proved her worth in the previous game as well. Elise being one more for the UK Legends. Last one lined up for XL Esports before we get that first pick in for the UK Legends. So a lot of very standard stuff so far. The Alistair going to be rounding the bands out for XL Esports. And uh, honestly, these are just uh, generic bands that we talked about earlier on. We're going to be quickly jumping out as it does appear that uh, yeah, someone had a bit of a client crash. So this band will remain the same. No picks were actually locked in, so no strategies were given away. No one's going to have an early advantage, but the, the bands will remain the same. So um, looking forward to seeing how things play out as we should be jumping back into Champion Select relatively soon. But uh, yeah, as we were saying, the, the, the bands seem very generic. There's no real target bands. Um, just most, mostly just taking away champions that are very strong in the current meta, but things like the Cassio still up and available. Uh, Jace is still free to play should they want that one. Um, there's also the Rise. We haven't actually seen much priority on the Rise, and I actually think Aurelian Soul also made it through the draft. So a number of priority picks, but it looks like uh, that UK Legends just going to keep it safe for the first round. Yep, Poppy being picked up as the first pick for UK Legends, very decisively chosen there. Presumably, uh, it's going to play into the game plan. But for XL Esports, there's a lot still left open for them to take. They have first uh, first chance to get those two picks, aside from the Poppy, of course. You could go for the Aurelian, Sol, and the Braum right now. Um, pretty safe. The only risk that you run is that uh, the counter is the... Casio into that, but even then, uh, Aurelion shouldn't be that much of an unfavored matchup. The thing you have to bear in mind is that in the most recent patches, uh, Aurelion did receive a couple of nerfs, and I wonder whether or not that actually hurt his priority in the champion select relative to what he was at Worlds. Um, but you, I feel like that uh, picking up like the Braum here right now would actually be pretty safe. Instead, it looks like XL Esports just going to go full aggressive with their pickups. Yep, nice pickup onto the Rumble and the Ezreal. I have to admit, I haven't seen that particular matchup play out too much. What should we be expecting in this top lane? Uh, a lot of pushing from the Rumble. Typically, he will have the early advantage. But the moment you get some magic resistance on the Poppy, it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, largely because Poppy is just a very safe, a good scaling tank frontline that can easily scale into most matchups. Um, but... Speaking of scaling, it looks like right now that UK Legends are actually just going to continue that trend with the Victor pickup as well. Largely because he's, again, a very safe mid laner that is well into the majority of matchups. Luke, Luke Ezzy, uh, I believe he is pronounced, um, uh, could go for the Orianna here as well, just like we saw in Game 2 of our previous series. Uh, or you could go for the Iranian Sword once again. Um, uh, I wonder why the lack of priority is perhaps those nerfs that did hit the Aurelian Soul have just pushed him out of favor. Not quite as popular as he used to be. Um, 
But you also don't have to pick your mid laner right now. You could wait for the final picks to come out from the blue side. You could pick up your jungler, uh, which, given what's banned away, at least Sin would work here. Scudzy, definitely comfortable on that champion. You could go for... Also, go for something like the Rek'Sai, or maybe the Olaf, like we saw earlier on in the day. Well, we'll see what goes in. It's going to be the Olaf. It's going to be the Nami. That's an interesting combination. Uh, I was going to mention how the Karma seems to play well with Poppy, allowing her to access all areas more easily. But how does the Olaf uh, change how these teams would make these final picks? Well, now you have to wonder... How, if you can match the early clear speed, I feel like um, given that you've already got a fairly scaling comp, you could go for something like the Graves. You already have a fair amount of utility. You have a solid front line with the Poppy, um, and you should be able to match the clear speed of the Olaf as well. I'm surprised that they would go for something like the Lee Sin because in terms of early trading, I'd actually give the edge over to the Olaf, especially mm. in terms of clear speed and uh, jungle ganks. Uh, it's difficult to say which one actually has a stronger early jungle ganks because an Olaf just runs at you. Uh, so it's fairly easy to react to. Whereas um, Lee Sin has quite a number of options with his ward hops, with his ability to quickly dash to places. The fact that you have to avoid uh, skill shots and stuff. It's it, it, it's a little bit uh, more varied. However, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. But this is the UK scene. This is often where you see comfort picks like the... Um, like the Lee Sin coming out. So Bowser probably picking something a little bit more comfortable. And the Caitlyn is largely for uh, lane control. When you're going up against an Ezreal and Nami, rather than go for something safe and scaling like we saw coming out from uh, looking for Org previously, uh, they're just going to try and match aggression with aggression. So Karma and Caitlyn, definitely a powerhouse lane that should easily be able to hold its own against the Ezreal and the Nami. Wow, <laughs> I didn't expect that to actually get locked in for XL Esports, but... Uh, we are going to see the Velkos in the middle lane. Honestly, I don't know how how that one plays out. Well, uh, it's a good thing you have me here. Um, is. That is typically my job. But usually the um, the early wave clear goes heavily in favor of the Velkos. Uh, once he hits about level 5, he's going to put all of his points into his W. I forget the name of it, but it's basically his wave clearing tool. It's not the harass, the poke one. Um, it's the one that you get two stacks of it, you throw it down the minion wave, and then it has two procs. Uh, and it's very effective at just clearing out waves very early on. And Victor will struggle to deal with this. And usually Vic, um, the the Velkos <laughs> uh, is, is going to be building very much around a lot of penetration. That, that used to be the old build. I wonder whether or not it has shifted up in more me recent methods. If Lucchese has decided to um, go for something a little bit more out of the box, but um, like you could go for something like the the GLP, um, which I have seen on a couple of Relian Souls. I imagine that would actually work out reasonably well on the um, Velkos. But the old build was usually go for a very early Moranonomicon. You want to pick up the Sorcerer's Boots as well, stack up the Magic Penetration with the Haunting Guys, and then you either want to go for the Ludens Echo, which gives you a little bit more wave clear as well as movement speed, which is always extremely helpful on the Velkos. But I'll, Alternatively, you could just go for the Void Staff. You just want to go for full penetration, uh, largely because of um, uh, uh, because his scaling is actually relatively bad. So you just want to try and shred as much of their magic resistance as humanly possible. Um, and when you're going at when you're running a double uh, AP comp anyway, that's actually very beneficial for your team as a whole, and it already enable um, all this magic damage that comes out from the side of XL to just deal that bit more damage. Well, I can't help notice, of course, with the Equalizer and the Void Rift, which I cheated and looked up while we were talking, uh, being roughly the same size. That we can see some potentially XL if they can find the right engage in the right area, a little bit like the last game, trying to find those choke points to fight in. They can put on an enormous amount of damage, and that, that giant, <laughs> giant laser beam coming out from Lucchese. I think they, it feels like UK Legends have to be so, so careful about where they can pick a fight. Well, that's... Uh, it's just one of those situations where um, the mid game is going to be very impactful for both teams and your transition from the early game to the mid game is going to be where this game is largely decided because when you look at the scaling that comes out from XL Esports, their actual mid to late game power is phenomenal. But then the same could be said for the side of um, UK Legends. The only 
big issue you have is that usually in the late game, uh, Karma support really falls off in terms of what she provides. Um, because she can't really stack AP, so the utility that she brings is fairly minimal, other than the minor shields and the, the slows that she can chuck out every now and then. Um, in the mid game, the Caitlyn also experiences a bit of a trough because she doesn't. She kind of relies on three items rather than just the two. Uh, yes, the traps are very valuable and setting up for sieges is very effective, but her actual team fight prowess is weakened by the fact that she relies more heavily on a three item spike rather than the two. The Victor will spike very nicely in the mid game, the Poppy will spike very nicely in the mid game, and Lee will like peak in the mid after having a very strong early. Um, but as long as. XL don't give away any major leads in the early game, like uh, don't lose any lanes too hard or give away too much gold, then there's no reason why their comp just can't outscale and come the mid to late game team fights. They should they should just raffle stomp because of how powerful their team fight comp is. They have a really solid frontline with the Olaf, they have good disengage with the Nami, they have a really fantastic kite with both the, um, the Velkars and the Ezreal, and then you just have big AoE damage with the Velkars combined with the Rumble that you were talking about earlier on. So. Uh, I I don't think that one comp is necessarily better than the other because I think both comps are actually fairly well rounded. Um, it's just that different. The, each comp has um, a different point at which they spike, so they need to try and take advantage of these spikes in order to make their comp succeed. Well, I mean, we're talking about how the game is going to play out in the long term. In the at least in the short, the early early on, we've got the both uh, with both having range supports down the bottom lane. How do you see this bot lane playing out for both of these teams? Uh, the bottom lane should should go in favor of the Caitlyn Karma simply because they have more pushing power. Uh, there's a lot more wave clear on the Caitlyn than there is on the Ezreal, and the same goes to the Karma versus the Nami. Uh, and their focus should largely just be pushing the Ez underneath the turret, and then just trying to deny him as much farm, take advantage of the traps and putting them in awkward positions that force the Ezreal into situations that you can then get harassed down. But there's no point trying to harass him during the laning phase, largely because they have good sustain with the Nami um, and because the Ezreal can just farm from range. So it's largely just going to be a pushing uh, pushing battle, which the Caitlyn and the Karma should come out ahead in. Well, certainly, I think it does sometimes catch people off guard how much damage, at least early on, Karma can throw down, especially oh, yeah. when she uses her Mantra with her Spirit Fire, shooting out that AoE damage, especially if they... I mean, you said it yourself, the... Being able to throw down the, the order snap traps uh, seems like that's incredibly important to try and catch Jokerism and stop him from being able to get away, getting away in a hurry. Yep. Um, we'll also have to keep a track of um, whether or not an early camp is started. Usually, if you have a range support, you don't want to do an early camp because you take way too much damage than you want. Mm. So you can see that. Uh, Sebla and UK moving into the bottom half of XL's jungle to try and get a bit of vision down. They want to try and stop that early comp start, but I think that XL weren't that interested in doing it anyway. So they're going to try and get an early push because the sooner you get level two, the better it is for the lane. You can actually be much more aggressive. And just like we saw in game two of our first series of the day, uh, you can net some pretty significant advantages if you can just get that early level advantage. Uh, so wouldn't be surprised to see jokerism and orcs just try and get that early push but that's also why you see Sebla and uk posturing in a manner that enables them to get a bit of poke off before jokerism is able to start that push going mm, uk doing some really really offensive posturing hanging out in that lane bush haven't managed to tell anything yet nice use <laughs> nice skill shot threading i imagine we're gonna see lucchesi threading a lot of those skill shots through trying to find his way to his mid lane and keep poking him down of course, poke all over the map right now as these bot lanes try and maneuver for those tiny advantages that build up over time. So you can see the pushing advantage in the bottom lane going in favor of the Caitlyn uh, has the CS advantage. And this is typically what you'll see from the laning phase. They have to maintain good vision control over the river because Scudsy can easily just flank around and crush this duo lane. I, in all honesty, they're, they're very squishy and it would be very easy for an Olaf to, at the very least, force a flash. So they have to respect him. That's why you see uh, a very deep movement coming out from UK to just make sure that they keep an eye on where this Olaf is trying to position. Yep, seems very, very smart. Uh, exactly like the previous one, uh, punishing Olaf's inability, like a champion like this uh, Nidalee, not being able to be as creative with his gank pass. And it's going to have to find at least, you know, farm off the jungle or find a gank elsewhere. 
Mm. Keep an eye on the the positioning of UK Legends right now. They're actually moving Scudzi's blue buff. They want to try and force him off it. And they're actually doing a great job. They chunk him out of his jungle. Uh, and he's just forced to back away because of the three members e strong unit that was coming out from UK Legends. The, I'm just very impressed with how they actually played that because Energy Ice Cold forced mid to shove underneath the turret and also Lee Sin just cleared the top half of his jungle to get the early level three and then started moving with the victor unfortunately they were a little bit slow on the play so scudzy could still get himself the blue but the the idea behind it and the setup was actually good very impressive coming out from uk well there we go the catch on to joe Cruism. he's being chewed through but yeah i completely agree uh, I'm liking what we're seeing from UK Legends, making some unusual plays, which feel like they're kind of catching XL Esports off guard, and they don't know quite what to make of them. Well, right now, oh, oh, nice combo down the mid lane. On yeah, energy getting taking a lot of damage, and Velkos, I think, can can maybe catch some people off guard with just the sheer amount of damage he can push through. Has that true damage if he can keep landing the spells in combination? So this is one thing you can do as a victor. Um, Rather than try and match the push, you can just match the aggression as, ooh, Shikari well, in the top lane. The f Flash has been forced out. I have to imagine that Scuzzy's going to come back again. I don't really have the Ghost themselves, though. I think they were maybe looking to try and force that into a kill, and it just didn't quite happen. It's all right, though, because forcing Ghost for Flash is absolutely fine, given that Ghost does have the lower cooldown. Um, and now that the Poppy doesn't have Flash, you can also set up for a potential dive as Scuzzy runs into Bowser. Yeah, Bowser is chewing through Scuzzy. It's going to be so, so hard to get away. Scuzzy, not the most maneuverable of souls, is trying to find his way out in the first blood, taken by Bowser quite comfortably. Remember that Scuzzy had already used his up in the top lane. He doesn't have the Flash. He had the level disadvantage, and he actually picked up his blue second, which means his red had already ran out. Uh, enabling Bowser to just get the chase, and there was no way that Scudzy could escape from that scenario. In all honesty, that was just a bit of a setback from Scudzy moving aggressively into the enemy jungle. Juggerism. Pretty hard. And they almost take out UK the heal at the last possible moment. That was way too close for comfort. It certainly was. But you can really see. Uh, the bottom lane of XL trying to get something back from this matchup. They're taking so much harass, and the CS difference is really starting to grow in the favor of UK Legends. Um, so all Joker is wanted to try and do is try and force them back, get a bit of farm under his belt, get a bit of extra experience, um, but he ended up just trading summoner spells. In fact, they actually came out ahead in terms of the summoner spell trade, uh, but he does lose his flash, which could hurt him later on in the lane phase. Yep, I mean... It's so, so crucial to have that get out of jail free card. I thought for a moment we might see Bowser paying a visit to the top lane. Doesn't look like it's going to be the case quite at this point. Certainly, Tolkien's been able to do a number on Shikari so far. So, uh, the reason why, um, Tol uh, sorry, why Bowser was hanging around the top lane was because he noticed that Tolkien was level 6 and Shikari was only level 5, which meant that there was the risk of a dive coming out from Tolkien trying to utilize his level advantage and the fact that Shikari didn't have flash. So he was just there uh, to allow Shikari to get level 6 and just respect the fact that Tolkien could go for a dive. So it's just good awareness from Bowser to be there for his top laner. Spectre's Cal is going to be picked up for Shikari, so like we've seen in previous games, go for more defensive build. Ice Cold getting lasered in the face by Lucchesi, almost getting taken down. Still a little bit left on that health bar, not quite the, the one more combo kill. Scuzzy finds Bowser, but UK is there as well to provide the safety and the smite coming out in the last second. A lot of damage coming out from the Velkos. If he'd gotten a bit more harass earlier on, that could very well have been a killer, or at the very least an extra summoner spell. But he's able to force out the ghost, and now, Sebla being by himself. Yep, he's going to get chewed through. Good use of the Tycholder's Blessing from Orcs, giving that little bit of slow to Joe Chrism's, uh auto-attacks. Almost managing to get a little bit more. But yep, a good use. XL taking advantage of the opportunity while UK was off trying to make plays elsewhere. But even though Sebla was alone as an AD carry, uh, he is now level six, which means that he has the advantage over Jokerism. Uh, and as I say that he just hits level six himself, so... <laughs> Inevitably. He, yep, the caster cursed, coming in strong. 
Nevertheless, uh, bottom river control actually in favor of UK Legends right now. And keep an eye on the Lee Sin. The minion wave is pushing underneath the tower of XL. And they could very well look for a dive, given that there is no vision coming out from XL. Yep, pushed all the way back to this bottom turret. It's making it so, so hard for them to maintain the vision control. Scuzzy looks like he might be thinking of venturing into his own blue side. Thinking perhaps better of it. Down the bot lane, uh, Sebla is getting chunked again. Again, UK away for a second. They took advantage. They, they are back in force now, and they're pushing through the harass on the Orcs. Who's taking it relatively well, considering? Well, this is something that we talked about earlier on, where you have a lot of sustain, so trying to get kills or damage down onto the Ezreal and the Nami isn't really worth it. You should just concentrate on getting the push and slowly whittling down this tower, putting the traps in awkward spaces, forcing you to play around them, and it just enables you to just uh, work towards getting that very early first tower blood, which, as you can see from that tier one tower in the bottom lane, it, it could very well go down the in the next few minutes. Yeah. A Jokerism getting chewed down. Yeah, but I, I like what you're saying, the very clever use off the traps, True Shot Barrage coming out, just mainly be used as wave clear. But of course they can take some trades. Keep an eye out for Bowser though, he's coming in from the side. Can they force this kill? Orcs could be the sacrificial lamb. UK goes down! Bowser is taking the damage from the tower! He's gonna get taken out as well! Could this be a triple kill for Jokerism? Sebla, so, so low! Oh no, he stepped on the trap! It's coming tight! Sebla takes the kill away! No triple kill today for Jokerism. The Jokerism had the opportunity to get the triple kill, and he fumbled it at the last second. But I don't know if Sebler's going to be able to get away as Lucchesi comes in for the cleanup. Now we see a 1v1 in the top. Yeah, Tolkien getting knocked up. He's trying to fight around this equalizer, fight at his advantage, but neither of them managed to force it through. Scalzi gets blown to pieces by Energy Ice Cold. And even with Lucchesi right there, he couldn't do anything about it. Absolutely massive misplay from Scudzi. The second one of the game giving away a free kill when he really shouldn't have been. His priority in the mid lane should have just been for wave clear. He should have been there to stop Ice Cold from forcing his way onto the turret. And instead he gives him over a kill. Massive misplay in our Orcs. He could be in some serious trouble. Yep, UK emerges from the bushes behind him. Can Orcs find a way out of this one? He drops the bubble, has to flash away. He's got the support of his mid laner there. Doesn't look like he's going to force it through. But we have got a Drake up for grabs. And we'll see if UK Legends are going to pull the trigger on it. So, flash gone for Orcs. But bear in mind that all of the summoner spells are unavailable for the bottom lane of the UK Legends. Just taking stock of some of the items that have been picked up, you can also see that Hexcore has been upgraded for Energy Ice Gold. Also got himself an extra Doran's Ring. Meanwhile, for Luke Ezzy, he still yet to complete his Morella Nomicon. Has two of the main components of it, uh, and is well on his way to that full penetration build. Meanwhile, Tolkien actually prioritizing uh, what looks to be an early Zonia's. Bit of a surprise. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, an early penetration item come out as well, just to help you during the laning phase and exert a bit more pressure. Works very nicely. Uh, against someone who rushes something like the cow, um, but decided not to go for it. Decides that he's going to go for something a little bit more scaling and prioritize that armor. Well, it almost went past without us noticing because it did happen off screen. But that Cloud Drake was secure for UK Legends. They did it so sneakily, the camera didn't even catch it. Uh, so, a nice pickup, of course. Much like the Nidalee from the previous games, we've got the flexibility for Bowser to go across the wall and manage to avoid being seen by the vision which has been put down by XL Esports in the river. Now look at Sebler in the bottom lane. <sighs> Trading continues apace. Both junglers lurking down towards the bottom side. They could run into each other, but I don't know who's going to come out of it the best if they do. Well, for the time being, it does look like that the Jokerism and Orcs are the ones uh, with the slight edge. But something that need to just backtrack and mention there was actually a roam from Tolkien down to the mid and because it came in from behind Ice Cold it actually forced his flash out which means that now there's a little bit more pressure coming out from Lucchesi in the mid lane which is good for him. We do see, excuse me, uh, Bowser hanging around the river getting some control over the Scuttle Crab so that there's more vision available for the aggressive duo of Sebla and UK. Uh, Bowser just clearing out some wards as well just trying to gain as much control as he can and it's working out very nicely if you just look at the vision, the bottom half of the jungle of XL is just littered with blue wards right now. 
it's I think it's been a dangerous place for Excel to be for quite some time. It doesn't seem like well, now that the dragon's gone down, of course, there's much less reason for them to meet in that side of the jungle. I'd like to see Scudsy uh, manage to find his place in this match, but it seems to have been really, really difficult so far, getting punished uh, for what could have been some unnecessary er errors. But it's it seems like it's going to take a, quite a while before we see Scudsy become the monster charging down and running down the opposition. Well, his focus really should have been at this point just on farming as much as possible or exerting some kind of pressure on the bottom lane to try and help them help them out so far he actually hasn't been able to do any of that and has largely just been giving away free kills that in all honesty he could have avoided uh, had he just been a little bit more aware of his situation he's not that tanky yet perhaps he's gone into a vein syndrome where you think you're a late game vein at level one um but uh, yeah, i know i have and it has uh, been a very unfortunate situation where you dive in thinking you can outplay your opponent and then you wonder why your attack speed is so low and you're like, ah, it's because I have a Doran's ring. Um, in any case, the um, because oh, he has found UK. Yeah, finally, he managed to find his way through. Here comes the tidal wave pushing UK back from the tower. Scudsy finally finds that kill. And it burns so many stamina spells out in the bottom lane as well. Sebla forced to use the heal. UK used both the flash and the ignite which means that a lot of advantages have been gained. Now, Skizzy really should move back round to the bottom half of the map and look to put some pressure down onto this tower, but instead he's just moved away, gone back to farm mode, and I feel like that that's a big misplay from the side of XL because that was a big advantage. They could have snowballed in their favor. Yeah, Bowser is down to the bot side, but up in top side, we're seeing more fighting. Again, top laners really going at each other. Tolkien not getting pounded into wall, though, and does miss the electric harpoon, but... The trading continues apace. Whew. Very back and forth right now. Uh, the gold is dead even. Somewhat of a far cry from what we saw in our earlier series of the day where it was... Uh, I think there were like 10 to 15 kills uh, at this point in the game. Something ridiculous. Uh, an inhibitor was down three minutes from now. So that's where you've got to catch up two teams. <laughs> um, in any case, river control... I keep bringing it up largely because it's very important for the laners, uh, and Scuttle Crab uh, it has become a more valuable uh, objective for junglers to keep track of because it's basically a free ward. You don't have to expend it. It enables you to get deep vision or just spend that vision somewhere else. And um, the fact that there is so much focus over it from the junglers is just something that we have to keep track of as we do actually see a three-man setup here in the mid lane. <laughs> Ice cold, getting chewed through. Here comes Scuzzy from the side, and uh, it's going to be Luke Kezzy who gets the kill this time. Oh my god, that was so close. Almost, almost managed to flop, flop it the last second, but the slow's coming out in force. No, Shikari punches through, manages to take that kill. They may take more. Scuzzy in trouble. The wave comes out trying to keep Scuzzy safe, but the, <laughs> we do see the last bit of damage coming through. And not great for Excel, who have to fall back from this one. Only less than a minute before we see the next straight coming up, it's going to be an ocean. So the actual dive setup was smart from Excel. It was simply just a matter of poor execution because Tolkien was the one primarily tanking the turret. He is on this rumble. He's not in a state where he can really tank that many tower shots, especially if you're just going to sit in a gravity field for that long. It forces him to use the flash incredibly early. Scudsy didn't have his ghost after using it in the bottom lane. And that meant that it was so easy for the side of UK Legends to just chase after the, the escaping XL Esports. Meanwhile, while all that action was going on, the bottom lane of XL had backed away. They gave away that first blood turret as well. And this is enabling the side of UK Legends to accrue a fairly substantial goal lead at 17 minutes into the game. Yeah, but I mean, they are looking pretty strong. If it felt like for a while that XL would manage to maintain control of this one. I think we might be again seeing Bowser trying to sneak away another dragon if they can get the chance. But at, the, at this point, XL do have a fairly reasonable presence down on the bot side. Uh, they need to try and get some kind of uh, tower control back because after losing that bottom, as Luke is. Ooh. <laughs> I felt like Lucchese could have died there, but Energy Ice Cold mm. didn't have his ultimate available, so it's okay. Looks like Ghost was popped by Scudzy. Um, I don't That's... know why. 
That, I, I have to assume that Scuzzy th saw an opportunity still. We're going to see XL start up this dragon. They're pulling it out of the dragon pit. Going to make it a little bit harder for UK Legends to try and steal away. I think we're going to have to see more of a commitment from Bowser to get this one. He can't quite land <laughs> with the skill shot. And at least they get a dragon back for their troubles. So it wasn't really worth giving away your life to try and steal away that. It's only the Ocean Drake. And while it does help a little bit, it definitely isn't the, the equivalent of giving away your jungler. So... Mm. Uh, Losing that would have actually been much worse because it could have enabled XL to rotate bot, try and take that early tower, and so on and so forth. Um, nevertheless, Dragon taken. Two members now from... Oh, I don't know if Scuzzy was aware they're there. Dropping the Ragnarok, trying desperately to get away. It's not going to happen. But the Equalizer is in this confined area. Bowser is taken low, but the double kill goes across. Nice pick up there for Ice Cold, living up to his name. Really good kick from Bowser just before he was about to die. He actually prevented Tolkien from getting that last auto attack off, which would have resulted in his death and also bought enough time for Poppy to come in, land the crowd control, and that gave him the kill as Lucchesi now. Lucchesi with a massive laser, still a massive damage threat, has that needlessly large rod. We're going to continue to be a damage threat. But has to find the right opportunity, especially really needs to be able to combo together those spells. True Shot Barrage comes in, doesn't do too much of anything though. Oh, just mainly used as a wave clear tool, also as a bit of poke to try and force the bottom lane of UK Legends away. And look at this, wow. The teleport was coming into the top lane. They He noticed that there were two members strong there for UK Legends. Immediately forced to cancel it, and now they're going to lose that as we see more ganks in the mid. Wow, look at these damages, bonkers. They have lost that top side turret, which I believe uh, they may be able to take a, a mid lane turret. UK, he's going to get aggressed on, going to get taken out, and they're going to get that mid turret for their troubles. Maybe even one more if they're lucky. I feel like if they overcommit, they're going to end up paying for it. They get two kills in the mid, they get a tower. XL should just be happy with the advantages that they've gained. They don't want to be too greedy, especially after all that they've lost to Scudzy now. That, like, that's the greed that I was talking about. There's no reason to steal away enemy jungle camps. You've just gotten yourself a tower. You've just gotten yourself two kills. If you're going to go for anything, rotate to the top half of the map and help your top laner take down that final turret. He's now not going to be able to get this. Bowser's here to help defend. And just, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm disappointed in what I'm seeing from Scudsy so far. He's given away a lot of free kills. He's given away free objectives over the... Over the, uh choice of going for personal farm it's just i feel like it's a greedy play style it's hurting his team and he has been a large reason as to why uk legends hold the lead that they do right now i do have to wonder if scuzzy's perhaps more used to playing on champions who can get away with it a little bit more like like lee sim like perhaps elise and it's it does seem like he's just having trouble in choosing the right moments to be doing the right thing. As we see a death rush being set up for UK Legends, it doesn't seem like XL wins a bite, and the Baron getting started up. At 21 minutes, this is incredibly risky. Leeson is taking a huge amount of damage. Yeah, and they're immediately going to have to back away. They thought that they could sneak this. They thought that they had vision control around the Baron area, but they did not check the brush that they were standing in. Therefore, they were spotted out. XL were able to force them back. And while... UK Legends do take a bit of damage. It's not actually going to be that damaging to them overall. So, uh, good plays coming out from the side of XL. And now things will return to normality a bit. You see that the bottom lane of Jokerism and Ox have been moved to the top half of the map to try and pick up that final outer objective. Uh, he will be able to do that, equalizing the gold once again. Uh, and then you will see Tolkien sitting in the bottom half of the map, not too overextended given that he does not have the safety of his turret. I mean, you, you said that these teams, so, so even, it's crazy to see how even they are. Same dragons, uh, same amount of dragons, same amount of turrets. And I agree with you, it's, it is a little bit frustrating for how hard uh, the whole team's been working for XL. Uh, for Scuzzy to be having such a difficult game. Still, items are being picked up on his part. I think it's also worth noting, you mentioned it before, that both teams seem to be valuing vision quite heavily. We've seen a lot of pink wards coming out, trackers knives being picked up for both junglers. So there's a lot of wards around the place, and they're also trying to remove the opponent wards as well. Well, vision control is very important, especially with the uh, dragon coming up in about a minute and a half. Trying to maintain control over the river will just uh, enable you to set up for that objective that much more easier. Scudzy 
Being a little bit more reserved, trying to get a bit of deep vision down as Orcs, he needs to be careful. Does manage to avoid getting caught there fully by Bowser, but this is going to give them a little bit of an advantage down the bottom lane. It is going to be an Infernal Drake coming up next, so I have to imagine both teams very hungry to try and pick it up if they can. But at the moment, uh, Ice Cold is a long way away from things, and I don't know if a fight breaks out uh, anytime soon, if he's going to be able to intervene soon enough. Well, I'm just looking at some of the summoner spells that we have. TP is up for Shikari. Uh, I feel like it would be better to actually put him in the top lane to try and put a bit more pressure down onto that tier 2. You can already see Tolkien moving around to clear out the wave because he also has his teleport available. I believe every single summoner spell is up except for the Flash of Jokerism. Not going to be available for the next fight, so his positioning is going to be important. However, full river vision control is in favor of XL. So if we're going to see a fight, it is likely going to be around this dragon. The question is, will it be a hard commit fight? Will it just be an in and out? Will they just try to pick up the dragon and then back off from there? UK deploying the shield. They've got such maneuverability, able to slip in and out of combat. Scudzy has managed to pick up the death man's plate. Going to be a little bit more of a frontline presence. Also has got a level 11, so has got some passive armor and magic resist from his Ragnarok, which of course does drop off as soon as you see him turn red. So it does become more vulnerable to getting blown up. But we'll see what these teams can make of this dragon. It may not be the dragon at all that ends up being the objective being taken. If they can turn this around, and maybe uh, we can see UK Legends make use of that Cloud Drake uh, to move in and out more quickly. I'm actually very surprised as to how quickly um, XL have given away the river control, given that they were the ones that were there initially, and they had the ones that had all this vision. But you can see both teams posturing. Neither wants to give away the Infernal Drake. This is a very important dragon to pick up, especially at this point in the game. Uh, uh, what really XL need to try and do is they have mid lane priority right now. Get a bit of a shove on that, as UK are actually backing away. But it is Shikari. He has teleport. He can move to the top lane. He can clear that one out. And now XL can move back towards the Baron, regain this vision control, and actually start this objective off. Infernal Drake is again going to be pulled out. Again, in the advantage of XL Esports, you've got the distance. But we may well see UK Legends try and come in. They do get the Infernal Drake, but the fight is only, uh, only in its beginning stage. And it looks like it's going to be aborted. Very clean pickup for XL Esports after a long period of posturing from both teams. That was actually very smart from XL because the moment Shikari was spotted bot, they forced the dragon. That means that he had to make a decision between going for the farm as Sebla takes a lot of damage. Yeah, that's a huge amount of damage coming in. They may be able to force down this mid lane turret. They have got the five men there. UK Legends are scattered across the map. They may well with pipped on. The big chunk of damage coming out from UK. Joe Corizon gets it exploded. Talking forced to use the Zonias, but he's going to immediately die to Sebla. This could have been a big mistake for XL. A double kill going across for Ice Cold, and they put XL on the back foot. What can they get from this? Well, they could just immediately rotate around to the Baron. Poppy is tanky enough to soak up all the damage. Caitlyn does have a bit of sustain to just get some life back and really deal the damage needed to take down that objective. And with only Lucchese and Orcs left available for XL, I don't know if they have an answer to try and stop this. <sighs> There's so many traps. So much vision, it's so, so dangerous. Lucchese does get the kill. Are they going to try and follow up and get more? No, Lucchese punted away. <laughs> no, sorry, his support punted away. Lucchese, very low health. The Baron does, of course, go across the UK Legends. And in celebration, we're going to see a brief pause as we result in technical issues. So... That was just a big overcommitment from XL. They had the positioning advantage. Forcing Caitlyn back was actually a really good play. But then once they ran out of minions, they should have disengaged. They felt like they had more damage than they did. The thing that they forgot was that the moment there are no minions there, the towers suddenly get a lot beefier and tankier and they become harder to take down. So it's not really just one or two more hits. It's actually five or six, uh, which Scudzy uh, doesn't take into consideration. Jokerism gets forced into a bit of indecision because he wants to back out, but he also wants to help his team. So he gets caught out by a flanking victor. He ends up dropping. One of the big damage dealers is gone. But even if he was still alive, there was no way that XL are going to win that fight because they just burnt four ultimates trying to get the kill down onto Sebla. And the fact that you have four ultimates down and you weren't able to take the turret, you just disengage at that point. There are no objectives for you to take. There's no way you're going to be able to force any fights. You just have to accept the fact that, hey, 
we've lost this one. We have to back away. We have to back to base. Let's just spend the gold that we've got. Let's just uh, replenish some of the resources that we need. Um, but instead, they don't. They overcommit. They end up getting caught out. Uh, Shikari comes in with the teleport and is able to cut off the escaping Scudsy, and that enables the rest of UK Legend to get a 4 for 0 or a 4 for 1 in the end. Uh, 3 for 1, sorry. Uh, move towards the Baron, pick up that objective, and now they are the ones in full control of this game. We're back into live play once again. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been so, so even. And now UK Legends are able to get that small gold lead. They haven't got the Infernal Drake, but they they do manage to take advantage of Excel's slight lapse of judgment. Uh, look, looks like perhaps the technical issues weren't quite resolved. But what do you anticipate happening next in this game? Well, what Excel need to do is just wave clear. They have uh, Lucchese on the Velkars, uh, two actors. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Wave clear. Um, sorry, like Velkars, Victor. I keep muddling the two up. Um, and. It's going to be difficult, largely because, remember, during Champion State, we were talking about Caitlyn having a bit of a trough in the mid-game, but then hitting the spike with three items. Well, she's now on her way to having completed what looks to be a rapid-fire cannon, I think. So once she has that completed, she's going to be a big, powerful lady carry uh, to act as a support for the mid laner that's 5-1-1, one, and one, has the Abyssal, as well as the Mark II Hex score completed. Uh, which just means that you have this very reliable front line in the form of Lee Sin and Poppy. You have good damage dealers in the form of Victor and Caitlyn. And it's going to be very difficult for XL ready to respond because while they are certainly strong in this mid game, they're very much more reliant on these three item spikes. The mid to late game fights are where they really net this advantage. And remember, we talked about how usually the mid to early game will be a lot of uh, the early to mid sorry will be where the the game is heavily decided and it was that one big team fight that really swung the favor it into uk legends hands and now they are the ones dictating the pace it is very much up to them to make a big mistake um in all honesty to to throw away this game it's uh, just given their composition given that both scale and the fact that you have one team that is ahead of the other, obviously means that that one team that's ahead will get their spikes sooner than the other. So they will reach um, a point in which they can very quickly close out the game. It's just going to be a matter of execution as to whether or not they can then do it. Well, do you think in that case, we might see XL trying to play defensively using the disengage that Orcs has on that army? Uh, to well, they have to. They have to play defensively now. They can't really try and make a play uh, when they're going up against the Baron Buff. They just have to mitigate their losses as much as possible. Well, that's going to be the first uh, turret taken from this Baron uh, Infused Minion Wave, which is pouring onto the second turret. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything about this at all. I don't even know what XL are doing. Um, the push should have been pretty obvious. Uh, they weren't in a position to defend. They pretty much gave up all vision control that they had prior um, and then they just give away two free turrets so uh, honestly a big misplay you can even see now Joker isn't prioritizing the red um, I feel like trying to defend that tier 2 in the bottom is risky especially without your AD carry who still isn't there um, uh, yeah I mean you have reasonable wave clear with the victor but you're probably going to be forced to use the rumble or just give away the turret entirely I think giving away the turret seems to be the strategy here. Yeah, I mean, it's. I did think that XL seemed like they were just going to try and clear the wave. They just didn't do it. If anything, they feel like uh, they're really, really hesitant about doing anything towards uh, UK Legends, even defensively. Well, I again, it's because they're playing into the Baron. They uh, they have to respect the fact that that. Uh, gives advantages that you really can't play into. You're already 5,000 gold down. They can identify that in the items that they've got. Um, but the fact that Velkos has now finished the Void Staff and Jokerism has completed his three items will certainly help in the next few fights. It's just uh, a large part of execution because the, the difference really uh, is in this Poppy and Rumble. Even though the Rumble has done very well in terms of farm, the, his usefulness in these fights is going to be very minimal because he um, his damage output is somewhat minuscule. He has the Leandries to help shred through some of the magic resist, but there's just so much that I don't think it will be enough. As Jokerism is now just going to get forced away from this tier 2. Another objective going down. That is the fourth tower being taken. Um, <laughs> And this Baron is doing a lot for UK Legends. Yeah, really. 
a really, really decisive play. Jokerism, they're getting me pushed back. Here comes this death laser coming out. This time not from Victor. It's going to be from Velkos. Threading the needle for Ice Cold, who's trying to get away. They're trying to push through the damage on him, though. Can they do it? They do get the shutdown, and they can turn this fight around. Scudzy is there. Multiple slows coming out from the axes. It's so hard to get away from him as long as he can keep running those axes. Gets the kill with the true damage. Shikari is going to be next. Desperately trying to find a way out of the clutches of XL Esports, but there's nowhere to go. Joker isn't going to take that kill, and only Bowser able to emerge from that massacre. And Lukezi comes out with the surprise play to catch the entire UK Legends team off guard. No one was expecting that burst damage. He gets the knockup, he lands the Q straight into the ultimate, just deletes Sevler. He was. He, he didn't know how to respond. This is exactly how XL are able to flip the tables in their favor. And I mean, now they're the ones in the driving seat. Even though they're at a gold deficit, they should be able to pick up some pretty solid objectives. That should be two towers going down in their favor. And these team fights that I thought would go in the favor of UK Legends, now suddenly with the presence of Lucchesi can turn this game in their favor. Wow. I don't, yeah, I don't think at all that the UK Legends were expecting the massive, massive quantity of area effect damage coming out. I mean, it seemed like for a long time, given how much UK Legends were being able to take out of uh, XL's base, I mean, they've lost an enormous amount of turrets. Six turrets to three. Even with the burst coming out of Lucchesi, I don't know, is it is it too much on Lucchesi to, to carry the rest of the team through the fights? Mm, it's... I don't think it's too much on him. It's very just much about his positioning as Tolkien. He needs to be careful. He is fighting it all there, but it's going to be really hard to get away. Has got a knock up there to have a little help from his friends, but he's too far away. Seba going to take the kill. Bowser front the line for the rest of his team. Where is that laser? Lucchesi getting caught out, and this is exactly what I meant. He has been taken out, and there's so much damage gone from the XLE Sports lineup. They managed to chunk out a bunch more from the UK Legends. But the dragon is up and ready for the taking. Really oh, good orcs awareness. In trouble. Orcs. He's gonna get caught. He's gonna get deleted. UK the one to take the kill. And it's gonna be an ocean drake going over in favor of UK legends. A nice pickup before the elder drake starts spawning very soon. XL wanted to get some vision control around the dragon and instead gave away all of the advantages that they had just clawed back for themselves. Losing not only Tolkien but Lucchesi in that exchange resulted in them giving away everything that they had previously gotten for themselves. So honestly it was just a big misplay. Tolkien shouldn't have been the one face checking. You should have had Scudzi on the front line and Ideally, Lucchesi was in a position to just throw that ultimate onto so many people as they just tunneled into that narrow choke point. He didn't take the opportunity. He waited a little bit too long, and then Shikari saw the opportunity. He flashed over the wall, knocked Lucchesi into the wall, and that gave him a very easy way for the rest of his team to collapse down and kill that high-damaging Velkos. That was actually his first death of the game. So, it's pretty, Well, it's pretty amazing that that is the first... Death for Lucchesi. I mean, it speaks to XL's esports ability to protect their mid laner uh, from the clutches of UK Legends. I mean, considering uh, what, the, what the UK Legends have got in their lineup with the Poppy with the Lee Sin, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, for XL, the good news is that they only ended up losing a rather than something like an inhibitor. They still have their base intact. Uh, the Baron is going to be the next objective, so you can already see UK Legends trying to acquire some vision control, trying to push up um, what they have in order to prevent XL from uh, contesting this Baron. Uh, Lucchesi is going to pick up his blue buff now, level 18 on the Velkos, death cap finished for him. I think UK Legends might just look to try and rush this one down, but it would certainly be risky with Velkos waiting on the Prowl. I mean, it's it almost feels like suicide for UK Legends to put themselves in this position to suffer the life form the screen's disintegration ray Lucchesi can put through and just chew through the, the life bars in record time. But both teams dancing around each other. Banshee spell is going to get taken out, which could have been potentially very big in the fight, but I don't know if UK Legends are really going to commit to this Baron. They do start it up, but this could be very dangerous. They don't actually spot the ward in the back of the pit, even with a pink ward in there. Uh, the trap line is deterring XL for the time being. 
There is a big minion wave in the bottom, but Jokerism used his ultimate earlier on to clear that one out, try and mitigate some of the pressure that's happening on that side. But note that UK also moved to the top side and started pushing the lane also towards the base of XL Esports. Send Tolkien back, get him to clear out that wave, and then you can use him to teleport back into the team. But it looks like the XL are actually prioritized on trying to get some damage down to this turret. Yeah, they've moved down oh. in force, down towards this inhibitor turret. This could be a mistake though, Jokerism has to flash away. X in the hole's gonna pour through more damage. Skelsey is providing the front line for XL Esports. And they managed to get a good chunk of damage down on the inhibitor turret. Not really losing too much out of the deal, apart from Jokerism's flash. Oh, that's a pretty big thing, taking a massive summoner spell away from one of the biggest damage dealers on your lineup is always going to be something that uh, XL want to try and avoid. But nevertheless, they're now just going to back away and they're actually going to lose that top turret. Um, hate to say I told you so. Um, however, you had the teleport available on your rumble. You could have looked to defend that one and now Scudzy going for a one versus one. I was just going to back away from that. Well, I mean, it's it's the same kind of idea as the split pushing. The mini waves really working in UK Legends' favor. I mean, I, I don't think anyone really expected the top tower to just go down to those minions, but really, really beneficial. I mean, seven turrets to three, that's a lot of map which is open for the UK Legends to play with. The thing is, XL thought that they could actually get an inhibitor turret because they had the positioning advantage and they were willing to sacrifice uh, all the farm and their tier three turret in the top lane for it. But when you actually look at the setup of the map and you realize that UK Legends have a gold lead over you, there was no way that they were likely going to net themselves that objective for free. So the safer play would have just been to push the wave in, disengage, reclaim some vision control around the Baron area, clear out the wave, keep your turret alive, and just play the safe game because you're not in a position to try and force aggressive moves, especially when you're 5,000 gold down. <laughs> We're seeing XL still lurking in the Baron area. Of course, we've we are seeing the UK Legends set well both top laners being sent to the bottom lane this time round. Of course they both have the teleport up and ready if a fight does break out, but they both seem seem to be more threatening to uh, force a fight around this Baron than actually committing to it. Well, I mean, committing to the Baron could very well be a death sentence, so you have to be uh, very confident if you're going to try and force that play. And given that XL are in such a deficit, trying to force it would be a massive risk. Um, ooh, UK, okay, he's, he's gone. Oh, that was ooh. so close. I can't believe he survived that one. True shot, Brouage. Can't fight, quite finish the job. Lucchesi without the disintegration ray. I don't know if they want to pick that fight. Oh, we missed it before, of course, that UK had, they had set up the Zerot portal down in the bottom wave, making sure the minions were pushed in towards the XL Esports bottom lane turret. Uh, but Tolkien was there to try and clear it away and provide his team a bit of breathing space. It was actually very smart from UK to pick up not only the Z, uh, the Zorot portal, as well as the Banner of Command, because you have to send a magic damage dealer in the side lane, which is going to be very difficult for him to clear out that Banner of Command minion. And it's also mm -hmm. going to take him a huge amount of time to clear out all the Zorot minions, because he is basically built around his abilities rather than his basic attacks. Uh, and through all the attention that he's had to focus on the bottom lane, now UK Legends are trying to force the Baron here in the river. Again, there is still vision secreted away in the back of the Baron Pit. Here comes Scudsy. Uh, he's right in the Baron Pit. He's trying to what take it for himself. I don't know. He's being eliminated. The Guardian Angel's coming up. But where's the rest of Excel? They're nowhere to be seen. And he goes down for free. Baron's still on the table. Are we going to see a cheeky steal? We are not. UK Legends get taken out. Orcs is so, so low. Their health bar is getting chewed through. Jokerism manages to find the distance away from Sikari. But Lucchesi, again, he's he's wide open and it's being taken advantage of. He does manage to get away. Bowser going down. I don't even know how that one happened. And the... <laughs> That could have been so much worse for XL Esports. Well, I mean, it was pretty bad in the first place. I have no idea what Scud did. <laughs> um, I guess the idea was that because they didn't have... I, no, they had a ward in the pit. He should have had full knowledge of what was going on, and he tried to rush in too early. Immediately, UK Legends just peeled off, and they're like, Okay, uh, you, you can run in, but we're not gonna give you this. Uh, we're not gonna give you this Baron for free. There's not a chance. So they just had to kill off Skudzi, but somehow Ice Cold also died in the exchange. So when you lose your mid laner for a jungler, yes, the Baron becomes a lot easier to take. But 
being able to escape then becomes a massive risk because you lose such a massive damage threat. Um, but nevertheless, they still try to force the fight. Bowser ends up giving away his life in exchange. Uh, Lucchese now has no summoner spells, but really no one has any summoner spells. So that's not really a massive gain. XL trying to go now for the Elder Dragon, but they don't have their top lane. He doesn't have TP. You cannot force this objective, especially when he's struggling so much to deal with this ban uh, banner-empowered minion. Yep, that's a really good point. We're seeing the rock mortal uh, minions coming in as well. Tolkien really, really struggling with this one. But Elder Drake is on the table for both these teams. It looks like UK Legends have put the inside track on it. Both teams having two dragons, so they're both going to get either team will get a huge bonus of true damage for that brief period if they can secure this. It does not look like XL Esports can really do anything about it, and they're not even going to try. Nope. Oh. Another big objective goes in the favor of uh, UK Legends. Right now, they're sitting at about a 7,000 gold lead. And really, it's just a matter of closing now. Luke, as he, he has to get that miracle pick, but for me once, shame on me. For me twice, shame on you. Uh, I can't imagine Sedler's going to fall for the same trick twice. <laughs> I think XL Esports have to hope for some kind of misstep coming out of UK Legends. They certainly got all the tools they need to be able to put this one away. They've got, they have run out of minions though, so they have to wait a, quite a while, to be honest, to be able to make any further inroads on this inhibitor turret. They have, of course, got that open inhibitor up in that top lane, and they can potentially force it through. I think that with a big minion wave pushing in their favor, as well as an exposed inhibitor, it should be pretty easy, but look at Lucchese. <laughs> That's just a, a warning shot saying, I see you this time, I'm not gonna fall for it. Uh, he's positioning himself in a way that the pick from Lucchese is going to be that much harder and that's just going to be an easy inhibitor for UK Legends. Yep, the Lightful Disintegration Ray comes out but really doesn't do very much at all for his team. It's interesting that we don't see an Aegis of the Legion. Uh, oh, sorry, of course it's been changed to the Banner Command of Silly Me. Uh, so a little bit less magic resist coming out from UK for his team as a whole. But they're, they're proving remarkably resilient to the damage that Lucchese is able to put out even with that Void Star. Now the pressure continuing to come out. Looks like XL are just doing whatever they can to try and keep their turret alive. And to be fair, they're doing a decent job of it. Uh, the Elder Drake should be wearing off relatively soon. There's about 15, 10, 15 seconds left on it. Um, and looks like that UK Legend is just going to be happy. They're going to back away. They've got an inhibitor. Um, and I think they're not going to be too overconfident. Well, I don't know. It, it looks like we might see UK Legends. They've got this rock portal pushing the mid lane. They could try for the bottom lane, but I don't know if the wave clear is going to be too strong for XL to really put make a significant dent in this turret. Well, they're going to try anyway. Wave clear duty has been assigned to Lucchese in the mid. Shikari, there comes the equalizer. Yep, this could be the fight that XL needed. Shikari getting taken very low, but Joker is going to be forced out of the back of the fight. Seven gone. gets deleted! Double knock-up! Ice cold! In the wrong position, Jokerism finding his way around the outside of the fight. Amazing fight for XL Esports. Managed to take the one for zero. But they forced Lucchese back. He was on a slither of health, but was still able to get away. UK Legends realize the situation that they're in and have to back off. And somehow Lucchese does it again. Yes, XL lost an inhibitor, but they don't lose any more thanks to the fantastic pick that Lucchese was able to find down onto Sebler. And they force UK back, and XL is still alive in this game. Well, UK Legends do still have the gold lead in this game. Obviously, ridiculously high amount of turrets taken compared to XL Esports, but we are getting to the point where items are starting to get uh, at least a fifth item being completed for the, most of these champions, and we are seeing some six item builds coming out as well, so that gold is not going to matter pretty shortly. No, I mean, it really isn't. Velkoz is uh, terrifying. Um, uh, late game Velkoz, for those that don't know, um, does a lot of damage. Uh, not only that, he has now completed the Rylizers, decided to go for more of a traditional, just full damage AP build. Um, I think it's fine for this late into the game, given that uh, you do actually... I mean, the scaling on the ultimate is actually very good. Um, but nevertheless, you can see how easily it just shreds through everyone. If you can get all those deconstruction stacks off and you can research a target, you, you will effectively do true damage. Well, there's no effective that you will do true damage. Uh, and uh, that just makes it so much easier to just 
uh, delete carries off the board. So now you can see Sebler. I'm surprised he actually hasn't gone for a Banshees. I feel like the Banshees would help him more than the QSS would. Um, because if you get knocked up, you can't QSS a knock up. And mm. you also can't QSS true damage. So uh, if you if you randomly get hit by one of these spells from Nukezi, then you are RIP. Well, the thing which I've, I found puzzling about the last fight is it just felt like the UK Legends really uh, put themselves in a position to have the turnaround done to them. I do wonder if we see, if we maybe if we see slightly more careful positioning from the UK Legends, that's going to be much, much tougher for Excel to be able to pull off again. Well, right now the UK Legends have full control over the top side of Exile's jungle. The Baron's going to be spawning in 10 seconds. They want to try and rush this objective down. Look at the positioning of Tolkien. I think they may very well be able to do this. Let's see if Exile can stop them. We, we are seeing the Baron... Lucchesi. Lucchesi! Oh my god, it happened again. Lucchesi gets caught out. And this is a disaster for Exile Esports. The Baron very much in the UK Legends' hands. I do, it doesn't look like they're even going to try and contest it whatsoever. UK Legends say, hey, look, we can do it too. They just wait for an opponent to just be ever so slightly out of position. They immediately hard commit. The Rylai's doing so much work to slow Lucchesi down. He did not have his flash available that enabled Shikari to flash over the wall, knock him into the wall, and the man that has been keeping XL alive may very well have sentenced them to death. It's we're seeing UK Legends powering down this mid lane. Teleport being used to keep the, the minions alive. But, and we're seeing the turret go down. Another inhibitor is going to shortly fall. XL Esports could be looking at the end of the first game mere moments from now. Massive minion waves knocking on the doors of the Nexus. Sebla is just tearing through these towers. And it looks like game one is going over to UK Legends. We see the Equalizer come out. Can they turn us around? Tolkien is there. He's invincible, but he's still throwing, splitting up the flames. Scuzzy is going to come back to life, but Tolkien does go down. Here comes the laser, but it doesn't get the job done. Shikari is there trying to pump through the damage. And we're seeing XL Esports torn to pieces. UK Legends take this first game. Nexus goes down. Sebler rounds things out with a nice quadra kill. Um, after getting caught out twice, preventing UK Legends from actually closing the game out, uh, they're actually able to turn that one around after a single pick down onto Lou Kezi. And what a shame, really, for XL holding on for such an incredible amount of time for that one big superstar carry to then get caught out right at the end. Um, but really, the main player we have to criticize is Skudzi, largely for his early game performance. Uh, giving away so many free kills. His positioning, his decision-making just seemed to be all over the shop, in all mm. honesty. And he was a big part as to why UK Legends were able to accrue the lead that they did. The real swinging point was that Dragon fight where UK, uh, where XL Esports decided to try and force that mid-tier 2 turret. They end up over-committing. Uh, UK Legends are very quick to respond. Uh, and then they're able to get four kills, a Baron, and that's really where their snowball started to accrue. And honestly, if Sebla hadn't been caught out by the Lucchesi pick, it could have been a very easy game for the side of UK Legends. They could have finished this game 10, 15 minutes ago, uh, but instead it ended up being dragged out. They ended up not respecting the Velkars until they eventually get the pick, and they end up closing out the game. So overall, good play from UK Legends, but I do feel like more of this game was actually just a lot of misplays coming out from XL. The UK were able to capitalize on. Oh, I, I do agree. It's, it was such an even game for such a long time, and you have to imagine a world in which Scuzzy wasn't giving away those easy kills was a world in which presumably XL would have had a fairly comfortable lead. But, I mean, it was still a very tight game for a very long time, and we've still got another game coming up this evening. I have to imagine that XL's uh, coaching staff are frantically trying to figure out what happened in that game and what they're going to change for this next game. Much the same as the UK Legends. we are very interested to see how the pick and ban phase plays out. But don't go anywhere. We're going to take a very, very quick break and then we'll be moving on to game two of this best of two series.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to day two of the UK Masters. We're in our final game of this evening. We've just seen XL Esports and UK Legends clash for the first time. Now we're going to see it once more. UK Legends managed to take that last game, but we'll have to see what XL are going to change up to try and bring the score back to 1 1, at least score them one point for this week. Yeah. Uh, while it is the first week, the fact that XL have already lost the game comes what? As a bit of a surprise, given that the UK Legends former, uh, or their current bot lane, used to be the former XL's bottom lane. So they're getting a bit of revenge for their uh, against their former organization. And in all honesty, uh, Sebla had a fantastic performance, as well as a not-so-fantastic performance, getting caught out by Lucchese. But Scuzzy's really the guy we need to keep our eyes on. So as we move into the next champion, like, we'll have to see if he can get on a champion that maybe he can have a bit of a better time on. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty terrible game for Scudsy in the last game. I have to think that he's going to be spending a lot of, t of this time trying to make up for it. We'll have to see if perhaps a different champion will allow them better success. I'd be quite surprised to see Scudsy go back onto that Olaf once more. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I felt like that it wasn't a champion that necessarily suited him. Um, I feel like something that, as you mentioned during the last game, an Elise or uh, a Lee Sin LA, uh, would enable him to have a little bit more maneuverability in these aggressive plays that he wants to make. It would enable him to be have a little bit more forgiveness. Uh, so as we jump into uh, picks and bans, it looks like that the, the bans have already started to shift themselves all around as XL move over to the blue side. Yeah, well, I mean, these, it looks like these teams have spent their time during games, the minimal time they had, figuring out their bands very, very precisely. We're already seeing all three bands come up for XL. Caitlyn, Alistair, and Jace. Kenan and Nidley, of course, also taken on the table for UK Legends. Syndra, the last power pick to be taken away. So now that XL are on the blue side, uh, they don't have to ban away the Nidalee. Uh, they're going to ban away the Caitlyn, take Sebla off one of his comfort picks. Look at these picks coming out thick and fast. It definitely seems like Scudsy's going to be on something he's a little bit more comfortable on this time around. Yeah, I mean, as we were talking about, it does seem like that could potentially be a better champion for Scudsy. That Poppy and Ezreal certainly been very solid picks. We've been seeing them all evening long performing really, really strongly. It goes, we'll have to see whether or not we're going to see Excel maybe bring out a top lane with some crowd control to try and combo together with that cocoon, or maybe we'll see that crowd control somewhere else. Yeah, we'll have to see how things move forward. Right now, you have a pretty good pick composition coming out from Excel. Uh, given that you already see the top lane, Shikari once again going for that poppy, very safe pick. The rumble didn't quite work out the way in which Excel wanted. Mm. Uh, I'd quite like to see something like a trundle. I feel like Tolkien. Excuse me, uh, Tolkien could make it work out. Um, it skills very well, would act as a beefy frontline. We even saw it come out from uh, SK Telecom uh, during Worlds up against, I believe it was the Flash Wars. Uh, regardless, I, I feel like Trundle can still be a good pick and it would be relatively safe, but given that a lot of teams aren't really aware of it, uh, they are going to go for something a little bit more safer, uh, as well as picking up a Karma down the bottom line. Yep, that Nar certainly going to be able to provide a lot of harass down to, onto Shikari. Though I do have to wonder uh, if that movement denying aura that Poppy's able to put out is going to be make it a little bit tricky for Scuzzy to make the plays that they want to make. But certainly, there will be a right pain for Shikari to stay in lane against. Well, I feel like, uh, again, the thing we have to mention about Poppy is she will struggle, but because you immediately go full tank, uh, you will eventually get to a point where even though you're in a negative matchup or a losing matchup, you can just wave clear and then leave. <laughs> you don't even have to try and fight your opponent. You can just uh, concentrate on farming, uh, look for TP plays, and you're still going to be relevant in these mid to late game fights given as to how well you scale. Uh, right now, the focus for UK Legends needs to be on what they want to try and pick up now. Uh, just pick up your bottom lane, go for something safe. No need to pick your mid laner now. Try and get your comfort pit, uh, comfort counter pick for energy ice cold. And so they are just going to do that with something safe. And I like this rotation coming out from UK Legends, largely just because already Bowser has demonstrated his proficiency on the uh, Lee Sin. Very good early game powerhouse. Concentrates a little bit more on farming rather than actually ganking and uh, trying to go into the enemy jungle, steal away some camps if possible. We did see the early invade in game one. Um, but it didn't quite work out the way in which they wanted. But they can try and reciprocate that once again in game two. And then when you pair that up with a Braum as well, you have a safe front line. And now all they need is a high damage mid laner. Um, they could go for the Victor once again. 
there. They could go for the Cassiopeia if they wanted to. They just need something to add a little bit more DPS to this uh, very well-rounded comp that they've got themselves so far. You know, I mean, I, I do like we're seeing UK Legends forcing XL to show their hand, show which mid lane they're going to go for. It is going to be the Rise and the Jinx down the bottom lane. That's an interesting pickup. Certainly, uh, seen some interesting choice for people not choosing to level up the Rise ultimate whatsoever and just provide more power during that laning phase. But the response still lies in the UK Legends' hands. What would be the logical pickup for them here? Cassio. Um, Cassio does really well into the Rise in terms of one but also uh, she can match the scaling of the rise and it would just fit nicely into this comp in general because you need high dps you need some i just choked yeah. my neck. i think that was presumably not the correct pick as much as i'd love to see it is victor okay, okay. it's victor <laughs> makes a little bit more sense so we've seen a Cassie pick there i was just gonna be like yeah it's cassio cassio is a really good pick cat and then timo and i'm like ah timo <laughs> can go mid hmm, interesting uh, anyway um they're just gonna quickly power on through the bands everybody knows uh what they want to be picking up mm -hmm. so yeah backtracking now victor we now have got the well-rounded team comp we talked about earlier on they could just go for high damage dealing good scaling they have lee sin for early power um he can help out some of these rough lanes and bear in mind that in terms of the laning phase you actually have losing you have losing matchups definitely in top for UK Legends, you do have a losing matchup in mid during the early game, largely because you get shoved under the tower. A lot of people don't realize how good the wave clear from Rise actually is. Um, and when Victor doesn't have the upgraded hex core, he struggles to sort of match that level of wave clear. And in the bottom lane, you definitely have an advantage in the favor of the Jinx and Karma because Braum doesn't really offer very much during the laning phase. He's just this big beefy front line that yeah he's great for peel the all-in is very good and if they get that gromp they can go for a level two play just like we saw in our first series of the day um but other than that they're likely just gonna get poked around pushed around uh forced underneath the turret they can't really match the wave clear jinx is clear of the wave is very powerful with her rockets when you combine that with a karma q you're just gonna get shoved underneath the turret and your turret is slowly gonna get whittled down um, the big difference is the Lee Sin, his ability to come in from these flank ganks, you can move into the Dragon Pit, ward hop over the wall, and then you can just come into the tri brush and set up a gank that they just uh, that XL's bottom they might not very well expect. Uh, and it's very much going to be on Bowser to try and mitigate this very powerful laning phase that XL have built themselves up. Oh yeah, I mean, it feels like it will be very, very fruitful. Uh, for Scudzy, if they can land even just one form of crowd control down the bottom lane when Scudzy's there, it's going to make it so much easier for Jokerism to try and layer that on top of each other and just ruin somebody's day. I mean, you know, we've got a fair amount of maneuverability from Ezreal and Braum, which is going to make that hard to land. But if they do manage it, it's going to be impossible to get away from. Well, that's one of the great things about uh jinx and karma like it's quite a novel lane really you don't see very much jinx and in, in actual fact she had a recent nerf to her e um the chompers where now even if you're in range of the other chompers they don't do as much damage i believe the yeah, the overall just damage from them has actually been reduced so um I'm surprised that people are playing jinx given that she's not even that strong in the meta and not only that she recently had a nerf um, but I guess Jokerism feels that it's a, a powerful pick into the Ez, given that Caitlyn was banned away by XL. They're just looking for something to try and push the Ez well underneath the turret uh, and give him a bit of a, a difficult day. So by running the Jinx, Jinx definitely can do that. She does a very similar thing to the Caitlyn, but she actually spikes quite nicely with two items. Going for the... You'd probably go Infinity Edge Rapid Fire Cannon. Um, and that uh, Rapid Fire Cannon actually scales quite nicely. Not Rapid Fire Cannon, the Runan's Hurricane. That's the one I'm thinking of. Runan, yeah. Runan's Hurricane scales quite nicely because it, it actually fires off three rockets um, mm. from the passive. So it, it scales, it synergizes quite nicely with the Jinx as a whole. Um, and it will give you a lot of wave clear. And she just has a, a reasonable two item spike compared to the Caitlyn's three item. But then at the same time, you don't have the same sort of um, siege power as Caitlyn has because you don't have the traps available to you. So. Um, you have the strengths and the weaknesses of each, but typically the reason why Caitlyn's considered safer is because she has that escape, which Jinx does not. And when you look uh, at the lineup of UK Legends, which is Poppy, Lee Sin, uh, and then the follow-up from a Braum as well, that could be pretty risky for the Jinx, so she's going to have to be very mindful of uh, their positioning. 
That's a really good point. I mean, even with Orcs putting down the shield for Jokerism, with the low mobility of Jinx, she's still going to have to try and walk away from her problems. And if Bowser can get behind her, it doesn't matter how far she's walking, he's going to be able to follow her uh, all the way into what could be a very, very nasty kill. Certainly could be. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about the matchups when the game, but when we look at the comp overall from XL Esports, um, as we mentioned, very powerful lanes, but their team finding is actually incredible. Uh, they have the Gnar um, to act as a form of engage. He'll have to rely on a flank because they don't really have any solid crowd control. They can use the Rise ultimate to flank behind their opponents, which is always a, an inventive way to use it. But mm. just their mid-game spike is fantastic. They're, they have good AoE crowd control. They have good AoE damage. You have the, as we mentioned, the Nar ultimate. You have the Rise spike once he's completed some of his mana items. Usually Rod of Ages, Morello. You see a number of combinations, but he's going to go for two mana items. Uh, and then the Jinx as well. Pair that up with an Elise, who's likely going to go for the early Rylai's. Uh, these dragon fights are going to be very uh, in favor of XL, which is why the early game is just so important. They have to be able to play around um, the losing lanes that they do have pretty much all across the board. So um, Bowser, a lot of pressure is going to be on him to help mitigate some of this pressure. Well, an interaction which I'm very interested to see how it does play out is the Realm Warp for Rise. Certainly is going to give a pretty good target for Ice Cold to be able to drop his gravity well down and potentially catch any... Uh, any potential flank if he can hold on to it and be in the right position at the right time so i think it does feel like it still has to be very very careful of where and if they do go for those kinds of plays because it feels like they could be punished for it yeah um, you certainly can be it's something you just have to be very aware of a lot of people don't realize or know how to play around the the rise ultimate um uh, or, and some teams don't even know how to properly use it. Some uh, inventive ways I've seen in the European LCS is actually using it to escape from things like the Baron Pit, uh, or to even use it to get into the Baron Pit to go for a Smite Steal. So mm. there are some creative ways you can use it. Uh, the most creative I saw was during Worlds, uh, day before yesterday, uh, was actually when you use the Rise Ultimate to bring a minion wave from the bottom into the mid to um, double the size of a minion wave uh, and also to help set up for the siege. Um, so, you know, there, there are a bunch of creative ways that you can use it. And uh, we'll have to see if Lucchesi knows of any, uh, given that he has had a pretty impressive performance in game one so far. Was really the the player that kept XL alive for such a long time. Uh, and on Rise, he certainly can do a similar thing. But he doesn't quite have the same sort of burst or pick potential that the Velikos had in game one. Hmm. I'm interested to see if as well that Lucchesi rocking the exhaust to this particular one. Presumably, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. What what do you think the exhaust brings as opposed to, like a uh, say, a more offensive spell like Ignite? Uh, well, exhaust helps with training and it also enables you to have um, a bit more presence in, in the side lane. I think it's a little bit afraid of the of the Lee Sin, early ganks, because if a Lee Sin does come and his flash is gone, then he is uh, a quite big risk of falling, you know, to the to the pressure. Um, mm. But I, I feel like... He, I'm a little bit confused. I feel like Ghost would have been better overall. Um, it's really good for diving onto the back line. It just... it It's just an overall benefit, because not only is it a second defensive summoner spell, which is kind of what you want on these um, quote-unquote low-mobility mages, um, I say quote because I mean Rise is pretty fast, <laughs> but yes. you, I, I just think it. I guess he's going for something a little bit like it's not even more aggressive because Ignite is aggressive. It's the it's the alternative aggressive to Ignite. I've, it's um, it's a little strange. Definitely no. unique to Lucas. I do get what you mean, and I have the very similar thoughts in that it seems like you kind of get a lot of the same effects from bringing Ghost, but we'll see how the exhaust is used. I mean, having two exhausts on the same team for XL Esports certainly means they can shut out a big chunk of UK Legends damage. Lucchesi is getting absolutely rinsed in this middle lane, though. These trades going massively in the favor of Ice Cold. I don't know. I think Lucchesi is going to have to duck out of this lane, leaving it Ice Cold to just pick up more and more CS. So one of the things you can do as a victor uh, versus someone who just likes to hard push is rather than invest all of your resources onto 
trying to clear the wave, you actually invest everything that you can into trading against your opponent. It costs quite a lot of mana, but because your enemy is focused on wave clear, they don't actually trade back with you. And so you can stay in lane longer and you can actually force them out of the lane, or you put them in a position where your jungler could come in for a level 3 gank, and they're forced to burn a summoner spell. Uh, this is exactly what Energy Ice Cold has done in this situation, and rather than just concede the wave and try and match the wave clear, he's just said, alright, screw this, I'm just going to try and... Uh, I'm just going to try and out damage you and that's exactly what he was able to do and because he forced Lucchesi back He's now actually got a slight experience advantage and he's even built himself a bit of a farm lead. Oh, Scuzzy is here! The exhaust is going to be locked down but Bowser is there to try and counteract it Down in the bottom lane, UK trying to get onto Jokerism They can't quite finish the job though and the aggression is going to be turned back onto them UK throwing up the shield but the trade going definitely, definitely in UK Legends' favor. I think another exhaust coming down and being blown on both sides. They're trading back and forth furiously. Bowser is in the area, but it doesn't look like he's going to commit down to this bottom side. I feel like that was a misplay from Jokerism, simply because uh, UK had overcommitted once again without, without Flash. Um, and... Orcs had already used Exhaust onto Ezreal at the same time that it was used on Jokerism. Jokerism had a health advantage, as well as uh, he was the same level as UK too. So there was no reason why he should have backed off. He should have just committed, thrown the traps down on the escape route of Orcs, and I feel like they could have gotten themselves a kill. Instead, he was too afraid of the possibility of a jungle gank coming down, uh, and decided to just back away, which, I mean... I guess it's big coming from me because I can see the mini map, but but yeah. at the same time, I feel like that uh, Joker isn't could have played a little bit more aggressively there. I mean, I guess that's going to highlight the importance of vision for these teams in their decision making. I mean, it is hard to criticize a more cautious play if it had the potential to have something quite so bad happen, but it does also bring the question of why uh, you want to do it in the first place as Ice Cold gets chewed out by Lucchesi. That was massive trade this time turning all the way around, and Lucchesi's the one to send his lane opponent running. Yeah, it looks like Ice Cold was struggling to trade back. Good DPS rotation from Lucchesi. Um, good management of his flux stacks uh, to, to ensure the most amount of damage. Um, because if you get two flux stacks and then you throw down the Q, you get yourself uh, a nice little shield, and you also do a bit of extra damage. So, oh, I know that... The way in which Rise works is a little bit more complicated, but either way, you do a lot of damage if you manage your flux stacks efficiently, which is exactly what Lucchesi did, um, and he's able to win out on the trade. Well, yeah, I mean, the if he can get the the shield coming up from as well when he's doing these trades, it's so, so hard for Ice Cold to be able to trade back. Oh, the fighting underneath the tower! Lucchesi's super aggressive. We do see that the UK Legends jungler in the in area, we're seeing what could be a collapse onto Lucchesi, but the pink ward paying for itself. Uh, UK is going to be in the court in the middle. He's going to get so much crowd control put down him. Can they secure the first blood? UK goes down. It's going to be Lucchesi taking it, and that's got to feel pretty good right now. Questionable as to why UK is even in the mid lane in the first place. He has no summoner spells. He is only level 4. The amount of contribution he's going to be able to bring to the mid lane is minimal to none, and all he ends up doing is giving away a free kill. So, uh, big misplay, likely going to result in an Infernal Drake as well, and just early game's advantages being accrued for Excel. Yep, UK Legends have been forced to go back to the base. They are trying to make their way down towards this dragon. We're seeing low health bars on Excel Esports. Teleport is coming in, but we're seeing a very, very close fight here. With Scuzzy is being forced to back away, and as a jungler, that's going to be a real issue for securing this Infernal Drake. We're seeing the helicopter started up. Is it going to go off? No, it's not. And it's actually UK Legends who take away the Infernal Drake. It's important to note, though, that Shikari did invest his teleport in order to secure that dragon. If he didn't join the fray, then it likely would have been able to uh, be a secure from Exile because Browser was very far away from the dragon as that was being started off. So... Tolkien is going to build himself up now a pretty big CS advantage as well as an experience advantage. And it's actually going to get a fair amount of damage down onto this tower, resulting in the wave pushing back in his favor. So he's going to sacrifice the one versus one to, en a to enable his team to get an overall uh, global objective. I mean, that could be significant in Infernal Drake, certainly taking a while to really make its presence felt, since they don't really have that much bonus AD or AP to multiply up at this stage. I mean, certainly early on for Tolkien, had that cull 
So presumably a lot less powerful than he could be, but it's bought that phage now as well as some additional bits and pieces. So when they get back into lane with each other, I think it could be a pretty tough time for, Shik for Shikari. Well, it looks already that he is starting to take a bit of harass, but bear in mind he has picked himself up a balmy cinder. Uh, so he does have a bit of extra health, and as long as he plays around his shield, he should be all right. Um, but Tolkien now... You have the opportunity to go aggressive, and I feel like he's not taking full use of it, but look at this. Wow, the damage from Tolkien really massive. Nice son goes into his big gnar. Uh, he's going to get knocked off the Keeper's Verdict, but it's slightly, slightly in his favor. But we're seeing Bowser coming in from out of nowhere. Lucchesi could be in trouble, gets caught. He's going to get knocked back. Can he find a way to get the shield up in time? He can! Can he get energy? He cannot, but here come his teammate Scuzzy. Trace the kill back. It's still so, so even. And they've got the numbers advantage. Bowser goes in. True Shot Barrage almost manages to get the cheeky kill there. But up at the top lane, Tolkien's pushed it in once more. Lucchesi did a good job to buy enough time to enable Scuzzy to come in and get a return kill. Uh, it was a very tricky situation for Lucchesi to be in. And it's very difficult to predict a gank from that angle as well. So good job from Lucchesi to just do what he can. Ends up trading a one-for-one one as now Jokerism left alone. Yep, it's going to be really tricky for him to get away. Has to use the flash. Orcs is there, but so is Tolkien coming in from the side. Bowser's going to provide some support. UK is the focus of the damage. Sebi are going to get pounded into the wall. The combo crowd control. He's trying to get away. Jokerism takes the kill. Can he take another? Tolkien's the one to take it. But now it's 4-1 for XL Esports. No dragon to take, but they're moving in on the spot side. First turret of the game. That was actually a big misplay from Sebler because even though Tolkien didn't have the damage to kill him, the fact that he then used his shift to move closer to the rest of his team, enabled Jokerism to get the kill, it gave him the reset on his passive, and that enabled him to chase down and get the damage down in order to get the kill down onto UK and net themselves the first turret of the game. Objectives gained across the board for XL. This is exactly the early game that they needed. This is the early game that we were talking about, and right now they are taking it in full storm. Wow, a black cleaver being picked up for Tolkien. Huge item pickup. It's going to make even all of the tanky items which are built, built for Shikari almost, or certainly are vastly less effective. It's going to make him so hard to get away from. Interesting, we're now seeing uh, the black cleaver being picked up uh, as opposed to the frozen mallet. Uh, what, what kind of difference does that make for how the teams play? Uh, it, it's not a. It's just a prioritization of damage over utility. Sometimes you'll see the early frozen mallet rush, but after it was nerfed, uh, arguably the black cleaver is just the uh, better priority right now in the top lane. So it'll help in terms of his side lane pressure uh, in the one v one. It's going to enable him to just shred through the armor that uh, Shikari has tried to build up for himself. Uh, and so, even though he doesn't have as much sticking power, he, he just has a little bit more dueling power. And speaking of duels... Yeah, Scuzzy getting chunked down! That last bit of damage! I don't think it's going to quite stick! Lucchesi is there, trying to provide some help for his teammate. But still, in the bot side, Yuka Legends do manage to rest away vision control. 1 minute 30 till the next dragon. And we'll see which team is going to commit for it. Well, that's actually very surprising that Shikari would invest his teleport into that play because now that's one global objective that the bottom lane of XL do not have to worry about. And bear in mind that there is no turret available for Sebla or UK. They only have the flash on top of the AD carry. And if they want, they could look to go incredibly aggressive. Uh, and speaking of aggressive, you can see Tolkien doing exactly the same on the top side of the map. They know where Bowser is because they can see him on their mini map. And just the strong laners from XL are taking advantage of the matchups. They're trying to push their lead ever so further. It is going to be the Mountain Drake coming up in 48 seconds time. We see presence in the bottom lane from Scudzi. I think you're right. We may well be seeing some sort of en masse move down to the bottom side. Shikari having such trouble dealing with that black cleaver, making Tolkien so, so slippery and almost impossible to close in on. And Tolkien's slowly going to work his way onto the turret. Um... Bowser realizes the situation that they're in, so he's going to try and provide some support. You can see the ward being pinged out, so the only way he's going to be able to get a gank is when Tolkien goes over-aggressive. He actually has no flash. He's moving towards the turret, and you can just see pings. Bowser trying to provide whatever support he can, and...
But bottom lane of XL are just trying to play defensive because they have no idea where the jungler is. They have no solid vision control through the lane. So there's the possibility of Bowser just making his way in for a sneaky gank. And they also have very little control over the river. So overall, there's just a very little vision for the side of XL. And it's forcing them to play a little bit more reserved than they initially would like. Well, they have spotted out Bowser in the top lane, so that may change the way they're going to play this one. Scudsy is towards the bottom side. They're going to have the window opportunity to try and catch UK. He is going to get caught up by that crowd control. The flame chompers don't fully connect. UK is trying desperately to get away. The Superman Death Rocket does miss. Are they going to miss out on this kill? UK cannot get away from the claws of Scudsy. So that was not the cleanest of ganks. Um, <laughs> if they had timed his flash, they should have known that that was still unavailable when the gank was happening. Nevertheless, the response from UK Legends is to try and pick themselves up a mid tier 1 uh, as the tier 1 in the top lane goes down. But that's a lot of damage going down onto Bowser. TP comes in. Nice not ultimate into the wall. Tolkien is an absolute monster. Lucchesi's trying to catch up on Bowser, but he's so, so slippery. The flash has been burned. Lucchesi takes the kill. And now they can move towards the Rift Herald, pick up another objective for themselves. Notice that both Jokerism and Orcs have all rotated around to the mid lane. But with Ice Cold having picked up his upgraded Hex Core, uh, I don't think that they have enough to try and siege that one down. Shikari trying to stop this from happening. He is going to get caught up. They've got the numbers. And it's, it's almost too late for Shikari. Has to creep away minimal health. The Chaos Storm coming down, doing a lot of damage. Ice Cold goes down. The Storm's still chasing them. Can they finish off Shikari? It's so, so tough. He's, Tolkien does get the kill. They're on such low health, but they really, really fall in trouble. Uh, for UK Legends, they may be able to turn it into something more. And this time it is XL having a much better early game. You can see the difference when Scudly, Scudzy is on a champion where he's allowed to make more plays. Using the Repel to dive onto the back line, he still has his flash available. And overall, it's just a much better performance from Scudzy and the rest of their team. But on top of that, UK Legends, they're trying to force these plays that they just cannot get away with. They are far too behind in the early game they have scaling champions and they're trying to force fights there is just no way that they can win they may be able to pick up their second dragon of the game but it is a small compensation for the massive deficit that they are sitting in right now it looks like they are going to be they are <laughs> quite sensibly afraid there might be some moves made in by xl esports onto the baron while they're taking that dragon i don't think it's going to quite happen but I mean, wow, what a turnaround for Scudsy after what was a really not particularly impressive performance the first game, to say the least. Now, a completely different player. I feel like he's playing a little bit more reserved, um, but he's also focusing a lot more on ganking than he is on farm, which um, I feel attributes more to his playstyle. And on an Elise, you can just get away with doing that more. It's much easier to set up for these ganks, set up for these plays uh, that he is relatively well known for. Uh, and now sitting at 2 0 and 3. Very low in the farm department, but it's alright because he's been able to. Uh, he's been involved in five of the team's eight kills. So he's definitely been having an impact on the map. And he's still relevant in terms of the game, even if he is a bit behind on experience. Uh, yes, I misspoke before. Of course, the Baron not up yet. Eclipse of the Void, the Rift Herald buff going across the Tolkien, going to make him even harder to deal with. We're seeing multiple members of UK Legends being sent topside to deal with him, but I don't know if they can do it. Tolkien doesn't get stunned, and he's going to try and 1v2 the beautiful Nar ultimate into the wall, but can he 2v1 right now? Bowser getting taken down pretty low, but not low enough. Tolkien goes down for the first time this game. Now, the problem with Tolkien making that play is, sure, you draw two members up to the top side, but when you have a victor in the mid lane, there is no way that drawing that pressure away will enable XL to actually gain any big objectives because Victor can just do that. He waves clear out so efficiently, so cleanly, that Tolkien was just overextending for very little gain. There was no dragon to take. There was no pressure on the tier 2 in the bottom lane. There was nothing for the, the side of XL Esports to gain from him drawing the jungler up to the top lane. And that's why plays like that, sure, they look... Uh, flashy i guess but it's just it's not worth it it's it's just a uh, it's too overconfident and just overall a big misplay it felt like xl esports were trying to make Lucchesi. some inroads <laughs> down in the bottom lane lucchesi always in danger orcs is gonna get caught though has to try and get away it's gonna be so so tough jokerism is gonna save his teammate 
Or is he? Energy is coming in. The exhaust isn't enough to keep the damage at bay. Scuzzy is there. Does get the cocoon, but they can't follow up the teleport, keeping them from going any further. And now the bottom lane of XL being caught out in the mid lane. Tolkien being caught out in the top lane. Members of XL Esports are just consistently getting caught out. Lucchesi's in the bottom lane. He doesn't have teleport. And the only wave clear is really Jokerism, and he could be in some serious trouble. It's down to Tolkien to try and save this turret. He can't do it though. Bowser are taking very low. They don't finish the job. Two kills for nothing. Ice Cold, the one to take the final kill. Another turret being taken for UK Legends. And the XL looks, it's so strong, but they have at least got that pressure on the bot side. And we're seeing the same sort of mistakes that we saw in game one from XL, where their decision making just does not seem to be on the same page. They try to commit to an objective just a little bit too much, and they give away so much in return. I do have to give praise to Shikari, though, knocking away Tolkien forced the no mana jokerism and scudzy to be alone to try and defend that turret but when you are two versus five you just concede the turret you don't need to give kills away as well as the turret and jokerism using his flash to try and get the kill onto bowser was just overzealous a, a big misplay and in all honesty like bear in mind there was a 5,000 gold lead in favor of xl esports they have now closed to a just under 2,000 goal gap um which is very impressive from UK Legends. But like, the thing is, the game plan for UK Legends now is they have a good scaling composition, and all they have to do is sit there and wait for XL to mess up. Because so far, that just seems to be the trend where XL just keep making mistakes, and UK, UK Legends can punish it. I have to think that it was some degree of overconfidence. I mean, you pointed out that Luxy does isn't really able to be able to split push in quite that fashion without the teleport to be able to pull himself back to the team fights in time. And it's very disappointing to see them also not pick up that bottom side turret after spending so much time doing it. It does look like Tolkien's going to be down there, but I do wonder, given how much, how significant Tolkien's been so far, if uh, not having one of these fights could be crucial. Well, we'll have to see moving forward. Tolkien now has been moved to the side lane. Um, he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure down, but Lucchesi has been pinged out. Scudzi posturing very aggressively. Yeah, they don't have the minions though, so I don't know if XL can really make anything. There's going to be approximately another minute before we see another dragon. But the gold said very close between these two teams, so they've evened it up on turrets. And of course the dragon advantage is in Legend's favor. <laughs> Almost, we saw something break out there, but we're still seeing a lot of skirmishing. But we might see Lucchesi about to get caught out. Oh. It gets cancelled out of the ultimate, has to flash. Trying to get away, Bowser is the exhaust comes out. Lucchesi getting chased around the place. Ice Cold, the one to take the kill. They are gonna tread it for that mid side turret though. But Tolkien is bra brawling, which is how he smacks him into the wall. But even with the frozen mallet and the black cleaver, finding it hard to penetrate Poppy's hide. And you can see the difference now with XL, even though Lucchesi died in the top lane because Victor was up there, it actually enabled XL to take that mid tier one, which is going to give them a little bit more control over the map um, and actually force the bottom lane of UK Legends back. But now we're starting to see the difference between a rise with exhaust and a rise with ghost, because I feel like rise with ghost could have actually quite easily gone away from that situation uh, because there was very little that uh, or. UK Legends would have had to invest more resources to get out, but props to Bowser uh, using his ultimate to actually kick Lucchesi out of the ultimate, uh, and then that wouldn't allow him to actually teleport away. So good small microplays, uh, but also just just backtracking to what we were talking about, the difference between Ghost and Exhaust earlier, where you can you can see there where the Ghost really had uh, the Exhaust having very little effect when you're outnumbered in that in a situation like that. Oh, for sure the. Certainly a very, very potent spell in those 1v1 situations, but it does feel very, very dangerous for XL to have uh, members so far away from their teammates, not able to get assistance anywhere remotely in time. And we might be seeing UK Legends being able to pick up this top side if Lucchesi can't keep them at bay. Could very well be. Lucchesi once again, though, being sent on to wave clear duty. Still playing that rise, decided to go for the double mana item in the form of Roa and uh, Archangel Staff. So he does have a lot of mana at his disposal, funnily enough. Um, and now just the vision wars begin around the battle, uh, the, around the Baron. 
Um, <laughs> the Scuttle Crab will likely be the priority. Four members in the top side of the map for UK Legends, but they're still very anxious because they actually have no vision on anyone on the map. It's Scudzy going aggressive. It misses the cocoon. Nice Glacial Fisher. UK soaking a lot of damage. He's going to be able to fall back. Super Mega Death Rocket does not connect. Teleport being channeled as well. Luxie could be in trouble. He's on the wrong side of the tracks, pounded into the wall. And Sibler is the one to take the kill. They've now got open road to the Baron. A serious, massive communication breakdown as Jokerism is going to die. Ooh, NG, the one to take the kill. Just going to make the Baron even the more certain. And this is going to put UK Legends over the top. They now have the goal lead. UK Legends, we talked about it earlier on. All they have to sit and wait for XL to throw the game because, I mean, yeah, they were getting a lot of damage down onto UK and Sebla, but the big difference was the fact that Chikari actually fully channeled the teleport, whereas Tolkien cancelled it. Lucchesi went in thinking that his team was there and they had all disengaged, leaving him out to dry. Jokerism tries to go back to try and claw whatever he can, but it just wasn't enough. And now giving the Baron over to UK Legends has reaffirmed their victory, or reaffirmed control rather, over the game and has increased their chances of victory moving forward. I do wonder if we're in a similar situation to last game, uh, where perhaps Lucchesi isn't quite as comfortable on uh, Rise as it could be. You were talking about the kind of plays we might see as we see UK Legends taking down the turret. Uh, but we, thus far, we haven't seen anything too creative coming out. Merely miscommunications. I feel like that communication just seems to be the overarching issue right now because they are not on the same page. Lucchesi going to sideways, people being caught out of position. Remember, the score was 8 and 1. Now the score is 8 and 8, and UK Legends have a Baron uh, in their favor. And it was just, this game, this early game was fully in control of XL Esports. That was the opportunity that they needed to take control of. They have a good scaling comp, and with an early lead, they could have easily ended this game. But Sebler, I think he's going to give away his life. It's going to be very close. That seems unnecessary. Oh my what? god, he's getting a double kill. How does that happen? Uh, Sebler? Wow. So he gets himself the two versus four? And he comes, oh, one versus four, what am I talking about? One versus four, and he gets himself a kill. Two kills. Yeah, it's two. Um, so, if you thought that Ezreal was fed before, um, he's a little bit more fed now. <laughs> ah, wow. Very impressive stuff from Sebla. It takes a lot of nerve to remain that calm under that kind of pressure. And I have to think that when that kind of thing happens, the XL just don't believe what's happening and don't do what's necessary to, to make sure that kill goes across cleanly. I just, I, you say he was calm. Um, I imagine in reality in that situation, he was actually like, ah, 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 <laughs> just rolling his face across the keyboard. Ah, oh, nice, I got two kills, worth. Um, in any case, flank coming in from Oh, Tolkien, Tolkien comes in by himself. Uh, he's gonna go down. He has got the Guardian Angels though. He's gonna come up in a second. Lucchesi getting punted through the back of a team fight. Energy gets the kill. Lucchesi could be next. They're chasing him down the double kill. Tolkien desperately trying to get away. Bowser is taking the tower aggro. Beautiful not ultimate, but it may be too late. They're seeing XL torn to pieces. A quadra kill for Ice Cold. UK so close to going down. They're going to get the turret. They're going to get a whole lot more. The UK legends could very well get themselves an inhibitor. I think that with the death time is this low, they can really push for much else. But I cannot believe what I am seeing right now. XL Esports were in full control of this game. And just a few misplays have resulted in the UK legends harshly punishing them. And now, at 27 minutes into the game, they have gotten the first inhibitor. Uh, it's unrecognizable from what we saw before. I mean, you said it. To go from 8-1 to this kind of situation, I honestly don't know how that happens. I mean, they seem so coordinated and so on the same page to start with. And as soon as the situation perhaps got out of hand, it just all fell to pieces for them. I mean, a lot of items being in the pockets of UK Legends now. They're picking up uh, the Rabidon's Death Cap as well. They're getting these items which are really going to help them press this advantage and make further team fights very dangerous for XL Esports, especially if they continue to make mistakes. I feel like Victor at this point is uh, just 
in god mode. You have no real way to shut him down. Uh, the Jinx pick hasn't been working out. The Ezreal now is at three items. Luke C, he could be in some... Okay, he's just going to TP out. Oh, he's just going to TP out into UK, though. That's a bad place to go. He is not get stunned up, but they could try and turn this around. UK trying to get away. Can they finish the job before the teleport channels? Ooh, they ooh. cannot. Both teleports being channeled. And Tolkien may end up regretting it. Super Mega Death Rocket does get the kill. Chikari trying to find his way out this fight. There's nowhere to go to the double kill. Going across the Jokerism. He's going to get the, the movement speed. But Ice Cold turns it around. He is legendary. He goes through and punches the damage right into XL's face. Orcs gets deleted. And we're seeing the Israel damage going through. Double kill. We're seeing tattered remnants of XL. He's oh. Lucchesi <laughs> finds Sebla. Another echo of previous fights. People getting caught out in the wrong position. Energy. We're finding, We're doing a dance here with Lucchesi to bring him up the back. Are they going to commit to this one? Both sides. Bowser goes in. This could be a mistake. Such low health bars on both sides. Can Lucchesi get the combo? The damage. Lucchesi gets Bowser. I don't think I'm going to take any further. But wow. Excel. Claw this one back. Oh, my word. That was amazing. Messy fight from both parties. It all started off with Lucchesi being caught out. He gets caught out in the river. The chase then comes in from a UK legend. UK is sitting there waiting for him to teleport to the other side. He's then overcommitted. Bowser gets a beautiful kick to deter the rest of XLE Sports, but with a fantastic ultimate from Jokerism, followed up by with a flanking teleport coming out from Tolkien. Things are actually looking pretty promising. Then Energy Ice Cold joins the fray. He just decimates the lineup of XL Esports. And when the, the fight starts to break up into 1v1s and 2 versus 2 this is really where champions like Rise can start to excel. And uh, Luxie doing a great job of shutting down Sebla and turning the fight around, almost getting the team an ace, is positive for XL, but they still lost a single inhibitor turret, uh, sorry, Nexus turret. Um, they've lost so much vision control around the Baron area. They do get themselves a Drake, but the game is still in full control of UK Legends. The, honestly, this, this game has become now a matter of who can throw harder, um, largely because both teams have the game in their control. They try to make these overzealous moves, and they end up getting punished for it. Well, this is an opportunity, of course, for UK Legends to throw if XL can take advantage of this Baron take. It is going to get started up, so this could be what decides the game. We've got such a confined area for XL to try and force themselves through, though. Gravity will be used the great effect to try and keep them away, but here they come! They, we're going to see the hammer being dropped, but are they in the right place? Tolkien is going to be the focus of aggression. Bowser takes them out. Sebler's Sebler down! Sebla goes down to Luxi. Scuzzy trying to creep out of the back of this fight. No! Just managed to catch Luxi on the back end of this fight. It's still going on. Luxi does not have a little help from his friends. He's trying to stay alive. Here comes Orcs. The Super Mega Death Rocket does not get the job done. And the health bars are lamentably low for UK Legends. But XL don't have the capacity to bring them any lower. Luxi was doing so much work in that fight. The biggest problem was that he was so far away from the rest of his team. If he could have just been a little bit closer to Jokerism, that fight could have heavily snowballed in their favor, but it just wasn't enough. Four members were required from UK Legends to take him down. And now, UK Legends with the four members strong said they're going to be respawning just now are moving immediately to the Baron area. And I don't think with all these super minions knocking on the door of XL's base that they really can answer this objective. I, I can't imagine they could possibly afford to give up another Nexus Tower. The Baron being chunked down. We do see XL trying to make their way up, but I think it's going to be vastly too late for them to be able to do anything apart from maybe turn this into a fight after Baron's been taken. Gravity well being used again to deny access to this Baron pit and a very smooth pickup for UK Legends. Yeah. Good play. It was smart from UK Legends to just immediately back and then go straight to the Baron. Uh, they respected the death timers. They respected what was available to them on the map to take. Uh, and it was just calm, calculated play rather than being greedy. Because you saw a couple pings for the mid inhibitor, which could have been a bad decision with Jokerism still alive and a lot of summoner spells unavailable. Um, but they get themselves the Baron and now they need to set up a, either a 1-4 or a 1-3-1. One, 
Uh, there's an exposed inhibitor in the bottom lane. They should have mid lane priority, so it pushes towards the base of XL. They send the majority of their members up top lane. They then have the poppy split push in the bottom lane, as we do actually see a rise teleport coming into the backside. Wow, we're finally seeing it used defensively. UK getting demolished. Tolkien gets ejected from the fight, but too late to save his teammate. We, again, we're seeing Excel starting to be proactive, starting to make the moves out, even with all the pressure that they're under. Creative use of the Rise Ultimate to get Excel another kill on the board. That's going to dissuade UK Legends from pushing, and this is exactly what Excel needed. I like the proactivity to just try and delay this Baron buff as much as they can. They realize that they can't fight right now, so that they're just going to try and stall, get to the super late game. They do have Jinx, who is considered a bit of a hyper carry. Rise, we've already seen how much damage he's throwing out in the late game, and arguably, he's on par with this Victor right now. And as long as the game uh, continues to get stalled out for XL, they have at least a ray of hope, given that, uh, as you've seen from multiple League of Legends games, the longer the game goes, the... The, the more that goal difference means less and less. Yep, it's it's so, so dangerous for XL Esports. I mean, we've seen them get within a hair's breadth of being able to chew down the last Nexus turret of the XL Esports. If they lose one more fight significantly, it's going to be so, so hard, especially with these barren up minions, to be able to deny UK Legends access to everything they want to take from the base. Jokerism finds Bowser though. This <laughs> they're forced out the flash, and that's got to be significant since now every fight could be the last fight of the game. This is pretty crazy that even though uh, UK Legends have full control over XL's half of the jungle, that XL is still trying to make plays. The Baron is still up, but there isn't very much time left on it. Uh, it's not going to dissuade UK Legends from going for the push. Sebla gets rooted up. Yep, nice keeper's verdict. They're trying to play around this. They do. They are going to get an inhibitor. They might end up paying for it. It doesn't look like Excel are willing to commit the resources to be able to get, actually get the kill. It's going to be tight. Here comes Tolkien. Gets the stun on Shikari. They get the kill. And it's going into Jokerism again. He's got the movement speed buff. He's going to maybe see if he can turn it any further. It could be a mistake if he gets caught out. Bowser, the big dragon's rage, kicking Tolkien back for his team. And they're gonna try and follow it a little bit further. It's so, so dangerous though. Yeah, this is risky commitment from XL. They should be happy with the kill. They only lost one inhibitor. And now what they should really try and look to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is get a bit of vision control back in their half of the jungle. Uh, they took a lot of damage. They still have all of their summoner spells available, which is absolutely massive moving forward. But they need to try and contest this Drake. I do believe that it is actually the infernal drake uh sorry the elder drake that spawns next and you do not want to give that objective away for free there are only two members of uk legends there at present energy ice cold is on his way but look at the death brush oh skelzy almost paying the price of walking without vision those two cloud drakes allow him to move on mass very very quickly up to the elder drake but it may function better as merely a threat rather than a full commitment because it's going to be very, very dangerous for both sides to truly commit to this one. A huge health bars on the Elder Drake, making it a big time commitment to actually put down. Energy Ice Cold actually burns his ghost a little bit preemptively, I feel. But the thing is, if you are UK Legends, all you have to do is wait for the bottom line to push. XL really need to send Tolkien there just as primary wave clear duty. But in actual fact, UK Legends are just going to abandon the dragon altogether and move to try and push down this bottom lane. But you wouldn't gain anything from that. You're wasting time, UK Legends. You can just use the bottom lane to your advantage. Force the rest of XL to back away and you can look to try and start this Elder Drake and force XL to come to you. Then just keep the dance going. And that way, XL are forced into a decision where they have to try and wave clear or they have to try and fight for this with a numbers disadvantage. And instead, UK Legends don't take advantage of any of that. So XL really come out ahead. Not only do they stop the Elder Dragon from going down, Tolkien's going to get more farm. They're going to stop that side lane push. And they're also going to regain control over the Dragon Pit. So XL coming out ahead in this one. That's... I've... If, honestly, I find it kind of baffling from UK Legends. Backing off there, giving the breathing room for XL Esports... I mean, they've got the with the two dra uh, cloud drakes. They're able to move around between the mid lane and the dragon very, very easily. And so it, it feels like, if anything, playing that kind of 
run backwards and forwards game doesn't play into what UK Legends are able to do right now. They're, they're certainly struggling to figure out the next plan of attack. Baron going to be spawning in a minute 15. Uh, the inhibitor in the bottom lane has about two minutes until it respawns. And honestly, XL are doing a great job of stalling until it does. Rise looks like he's working towards the death camp to round out his build. Could be a Ludens, but I'd be surprised. Um, if he decides to round things out with that. QSS also picked up for the Jokerism. He's now pretty much at full build. Uh, and he is one scary AD carry, but that is one scarier. Oh, look at Sebla. He's gone. Sebla gets deleted. Tell Telkin is around the back line trying to drive away the, the primary damage dealer, Ice Cold. And they move in on this this Elder Drake. They have got the, they've taken out the vision and they are taking this Elder Drake away. Bowser is there. He comes in too late and he's going to get taken as well. That's massive. The Guardian Angel is there. But they've got the crowd control. No, he flashes across the wall. Tolkien punted back. But Scuzzy takes the kill. And this could be the opening that XL Esports desperately needed. The thing is, Bowser, he now, with a 50-second death timer, is not going to be up in time for the Baron. XL Esports can just quickly rotate round. They have three dragons at their disposal. That infernal damage is going to be so good. Sorry, the... Elder damage is going to be so good, and they're just going to shred through this Baron. There is going to be no answer to it, and this is everything that XL need to try and close out the game. What a turnaround this game has been so back and forth between these games. XL finally managed to find the right fight at the right time. I mean, we get certainly getting towards those finished items for pretty much, or at least the fifth item has been completed, much similar to the previous game. Uh, but the gold. Again, surprisingly, really close between these two teams for 40 minutes in. Well, they're pretty much at full build, so the the gold really does mean very little at this point. Um, the irony is that it was Luxy constantly catching Sebla out in game one to eventually have Luxy get caught out um, to lose the game. And now Sebla was catching Luxy out all game, and now Luxy is the one to catch Sebla out. And that may very well now result in the game going in favor of XL. They have everything they could possibly need to close out the game. Literally everything. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not the throw genes are too strong within them. We'll have to find out as you do see a big minion wave being pushed in from Tolkien. Pressure in the mid coming out from the rest of XL Esports. They just have to be so careful not to overcommit. That victor damage is still something that you cannot afford to underestimate. It's such a short duration on that dragon buff as well. They did manage to of course get the turret for it. And if we can see Tolkien manage to push down the turret as well, that's going to be a big, a huge amount of gold going uh, in Excel's favor. They're pushing in on the inhibitor turret as well. If they can force it through, this is going to be pretty massive for them. UK is in position to try and make something happen. Bowser right in the back line, but he's the one to get caught out. And now they've got the window to take the inhibitor. The teleport comes across. Scunzi is going to get his Guardian Angel burst down, but Shikari. It's going to get taken out as well. Both Guardian Angels being burst for both teams. Tolkien, they're working on such low health bars, but the inhibitor is theirs for the taking. Yeah, but the question is, can they get anything more from this? Because it's only been a one for one. Baron empowered minion made, uh, Baron empowered minions in the bottom wave. Uh, now it's going to be a second inhibitor and XL. They're going to play it safe. They're just going to back away and take the advantages that they've accrued. Amazing for XL at this point to be able to go through and get both inhibitors for such for such an extended period there it seemed like they've more or less managed to make the sufficient number of mistakes to completely lose the game but again it's just it feels like we're seeing such different sides of the same team in such short periods of time so I think it's important to note that um, XL even though they did throw a lot when they were literally at death's door they also made a lot of positive proactive movements uh, that enabled them to stay in the game. The use of the Rise Ultimate to get a pick, punishing Shikari's greedy pathing, rotating from the bot to the mid and getting themselves another pick. Uh, just smart decisions and smart advantages that enable them to just delay the enemy Baron as much as possible and keep them alive to then fight over a dragon. And honestly, it was just then UK Legends 
their leads have come from punishing the mistakes of XL. And if XL don't make mistakes, then they prove that they are actually the stronger team in this matchup. But it's very much based around how many mistakes will XL make. Um, and right now they're not making many, but this could be one right here. Bowser doesn't manage to get the Dragon's Rage going quite the right direction. UK is there as the front line. And of course, XL managed to disengage while in the base, they're working over the Nexus Towers. Doing what you said before, applying that Baron buff to as many minions as possible, providing so much pressure on UK Legends base. Lucchese doing what he can. Baron buff has worn out, but with the divided pressure from XL, he's definitely making UK Legends life difficult, but look at all the poke coming out from Sedler. He's actually doing a lot of work to force Scudzy back. But now three versus two in the base. Can XL actually try and force anything? It's looking a little dicey. I mean, at this point, XL have such a strong position, but it still feels like they've got a chance to maybe make just that little bit, show a little bit of over eagerness and throw away all of their advantages. They are moving on to this next net. Uh, sorry, next inhibitor turret, while the Nexus turret continues to receive pressure. Tolkien, Vena Pain for UK Legends to deal with all game long, and is continuing to be so. The wave clear off the top lane is keeping XL from that last inhibitor, though. Honestly, like, it's just energy ice gold rotating between the two lanes, using that death rate to just keep his team alive, but slowly and surely, the base of UK Legends is being whittled down. Jokerism using the rockets to get that extended range. Just look at the wave clear. It is so difficult for XL. They're doing everything that they can, but it is just not enough right now. It's seeming like it's going to... They still haven't managed to penetrate the top side of the base. The super minions are starting to creep into the UK Legends base. Going to give them a lot more to think about. And Tolkien still discovered a new and delightful place to live. It's the UK Legends base. He's proving undealable with uh, for even uh, multiple members of the UK Legends and he keeps that pressure on but can XL finish the job? Well, right now no. Um, <laughs> Inhibitor is going to be respawning within the next one to two minutes which means that the window of opportunity that XL have is closing but the Baron's going to be spawning up in about one minute's time. Uh, they need slightly better vision control in the top half of the jungle if they want to guarantee that for themselves but look oh. at energy he go he goes in the storm comes down scuzzy trying to get away has to repel on minimal health but is going to come down and get eliminated this is the window for uk legends orcs is going to try and get away they have got a distance and so i don't know if they're going to be able to take advantage of their temporary numbers advantage the thing is though they've bought time they've done exactly what xl have done and they they have sustained the aggression coming out from their opposition. And now they can regain vision control around their half of the base. And I mean, I can't blame XL because really there was no other objective for them to take other than to try and push. Uh, the top lane made the most sense. However, I feel like it would have made more sense to just have Rise sitting in the top lane and actually have four members sitting in the enemy base, just knocking onto those Nexus turrets, because the Nexus turrets require more defense. And if you actually put the Victor up against the Rise, I'm quite confident that the Rise could just go ham, flash in, and probably get himself the kill, especially when you have an exhaust on the Rise as well. So slightly poor management of players, um, arguably. Uh, however, for the time being, Nothing gained nor lost for either side. Baron is up. This will be the big play. Whether or not XL can get this for themselves will decide whether or not they come out with a 1-1 or whether or not UK Legends can take a 2-0 in this series. <laughs> the, the, the dance begins around the Baron. Of course, Lee Sin, a very, very potent Baron stealer. Keep an eye out for Lucy. He is in that top plane, trying to keep the pressure up while at the same time, Tolkien is down at the bottom. So they do have... They split attention for both teams. Of course, Shikari there, trying to make sure the inhibitor doesn't get taken for nothing. But I do wonder if Tolkien could, in fact, just walk in and take that inhibitor anyway. He doesn't really need any minions at this point. He also can't really die. Um, he probably could just walk in. I guess he's afraid of that. Like, look, they do zero damage to each other. It's negligible. Like, they regenerate more health than they actually do damage to one another. Um, oh, Shikari actually taking a fair chunk. Yes, you say this and immediately, uh, as is always the case, it's been wrong. Finally, Tolkien is going to make those inroads on the inhibitor, but we see UK Legends sending the support UK down to try and assist. Nice boomerang, cutting out some of the speed. But the question is, 
Can Excel make anything of this commitment, or will they just take the normal road and push themselves down the middle lane, take these open inhibitors? I mean, Excel, they're just really unsure what to do. They need to stop Lee Sin somehow. Um, looks like they are going to get this inhibitor, though. Yep, that one's going to be free. Shikari pounds Tolkien into the wall and sends him away. That was a not And did you guys call this here? That's actually really big, because now Excel can just rush... Yeah, but Excel are going for that Baron. I don't know if we're going to see... We do see the True Shot Barrage coming out. It's not going to be the Difference Maker. We've got the Bowser. We've got Bowser from the side. And it looks like Excel might... Are they going to disengage from this? They're just super scared of Bowser. Bowser doesn't have Flash. I would argue just Flash over the wall and try and force him back. Or try and go for a kill. Or just... Just make a play, Excel. You, <laughs> you have everything right now going in your favor. Like... You need deeper vision to see exactly what's going on, but they're just not taking advantage of it. This is... It's a little bit frustrating. XL, they could be playing this much better, but their communication just does not seem to be on point. Oh, they've landed a hook onto Bowser. There we go, Bowser has been caught this time. He goes into the Baron Pit. Nice use of the Dragon's Rage to try and keep himself safe, but he now is on the run. Tolkien, again, in the UK Legends base, scrapping out rather pointlessly with Shikari. Has to burn the ultimate. Just to try and keep him at bay. Bowser's been caught though! He is gonna burn his guardian angel. Surely the crowd control is gonna be enough. The cocoon misses. Not gonna matter though. Loopsy takes him out, and now the Baron is wide open for XL Esports. Looks like that they're gonna trade it for the Elder Dragon, and I think this is the best you can make out of a terrible situation. Bowser ended up getting hit by a stray cocoon. XL finally found the pick that they were looking for, and now with the Baron and with the incredibly long death timers of UK Legends, I feel like there is very little that they will be able to do to prevent the Onslaught. Because Tolkien now taking a lot of damage. This could be a mistake with the Elder Dragon. So much true damage coming through. He's going to try and get away. He gets caught though. And the, this is going to be the fight. UK does go down. Luke sees that the trying to work around the back of the fight. Getting chunked down. Several of the ones to take the kill. And UK Legends are the ones winning this fight with all that true damage. The thing you have to realize is that when it comes to the damage buffs that both Baron and the Elder Dragon give you, it is always better to fight with the Elder Dragon than it is Baron. Baron provides much more utility than the Elder Dragon does, and in actual forcing fights, it doesn't actually give you that much. Whereas the Elder Dragon pretty much in, uh, increases your damage so significantly that you can turn around so many fights that wouldn't typically go in your favor. Another big problem for Excel is how they actually went into the fight. They were so disjointed, their target focus was not on point. And then mad props to Energy Ice Cold for his positioning, moving in a manner that enabled him to freely get damage off while really being at minimal risk of taking any damage himself, fully utilizing this Elder Dragon. And now with a numbers advantage, they're going to look to try and push something. Excel have to make sure that they don't get caught out because there's not that long until Lucchese respawns. This is such an opportunity for UK Legends. With this true damage, they're going to be so, so dangerous if they can push through. But no, they're falling back from the turret. I don't know what it is they want to get here. Uh, mostly they just want to try and clear the minion wave out. They want to try and delay possible. Problem with the Elder Dragon is it only lasts two minutes relative to the four minutes of the Elder of uh, the Baron. Oh, Scuzzy could have been caught. Has to repel up. But the fight is in this confined area. Joker is in. Oh, Jokerism gets taken down. Scudsy could be next on the menu. Could this be the heartbreak for XL Esports? They've got their open inhibitor raise be taken. Scudsy gets eliminated. Now it's three on five in our own base. This is looking dire for XL Esports. Sebler gets another kill. Inhibitor goes down. Only one Nexus Tower stands between them and the win. This is such a heartbreak for XL Esports. They fought so hard that UK Legends are going to take the game. <sighs> Nothing but disappointment for XL Esports. Uh, <laughs> not only was that uh, a, a horrible way to lose a game, but they had full control over the early game. They played the map incredibly well. They had an accrued an advantage using the comp the way in which they were supposed to. And... They just made so many mistakes. They got super overconfident. It felt like that they weren't communicating whatsoever. They were getting caught out in side lanes. Uh, they were going for objectives that they really shouldn't have been trying to force. Uh, and then 
they go and make a fight against a team that literally just picked up Elder Dragon. The game was theirs. They had to just not die and set up a siege onto the enemy base. There were two exposed inhibitors. You had a Baron, and all you do is you press the B button, and then you literally push. You send Col Tolkien into a side lane. You have four members go into the mid. You take two inhibitors, and then you end the game. And instead, they try to force a fight. They lose three members. Then when they're trying to respawn, it enables UK Legends to collect themselves, try and force a fight. They get a pick in the enemy jungle. In the enemy jungle, at 50 minutes into the game, and then they end up losing everything. So I, it, it, as much as it is heartbreak for XL, it was like they should have won that game at least three times. Um, so I have... Uh, uh, it, utter disappointment <laughs> um and honestly like it was it was honestly quite shocking but but there we are um hopefully xl can bounce back from this this is still week one but uh for uk legends this is massive for them you know uh xl esports considered a top four uk team to get a win this early on in the season is absolutely massive well yeah i mean the especially with the best of two format getting both those wins over you know in close games it's absolutely massive i mean there's gonna be some uh, some of the top teams against some of the lower teams which will be able to get those two games but it's gonna be hard to be able to accrue a lot of points so i think a lot of these games are going to be won each for a long time <sighs> really really well played from uk legends <sighs> i don't know uh, how xl are going to recover going into the next week but that is going to be all we're going to see for, for the time being. Next week, we're going to be seeing our good friends looking for all going up against Sensei. <laughs> uh, the Ant District versus UK Legends, who just saw one that win those games, uh, we're going to play again next Monday. TCA on Tuesday are going to be playing against XL, who hopefully find their way to the win conditions. And Eminem take on Perilous Void. I've been Peter Wesker Biscuit Harnell. Joining me today has been Vedius. Any last words to take us into the night? Uh, nope. It was a fun cast on the day. Uh, well played to all the teams. We had two, two zeros. One was a little bit more convincing than the other. Um, I think XL are going to struggle against TCA next week based on what we saw. Um, but thank you very much, Multiplayer, for having me. Next week, you will have your regular broadcasters return. I was just here filling in for a scoundrel. So I will still be around enjoying the UK League of Legends scene. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what else they have to bring. Mm -hmm.